What is up, guys? Dashing here for episode 175 of Community Universe Mode Live here at Dark Carnival on the pre-show. We are getting things started here on this uh, night of non-stop action. Two Hell in a Cell matches, two Steel Cage matches, an absolutely stacked card. But to get the show rolling... Live from Salt Lake City, Utah. Excuse me, Austin. That's extremely rude. I'm just going to end the stream now. Rip. No, but hello. Please don't. I'm, I've been triggered because of that. But, uh, what? <laughs> Kicking things off, though. It is the Corporation guys and Ziegler taking on the Fast and the Furious and William Rage in six-man tag team action. Hello, Zach. Again... This is the pre-show. Immediately following this, like I said, stacked card. It is going to be an amazing night, guys. Five championships on the line. Like I said, two Hell in a Cell matches, two Steel Cage matches. Tag titles defended. T and Lee try to get their uh, championship back against two-man power trip. Main event of the evening. Going to see Voodoo Insane locked inside the cold and calculated Steel Cage. Vying for that undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, no, our, our halftime show, Tim, is going to be Hannibal headbutting various different objects. Victor, hello. Long time no see. It is a six-man tag team match, Edith. Come on. No, you're not late, Dynamic. This is the pre-show. The Corporation, Corporate Billy and Mike Grizzly team up with Ziegler here tonight. Take on the Fast and the Furious and William Rage earlier tonight before the show went on the air. Before it's kicked, the court kicked things off here. We actually saw the Corporation backstage being hyped up by Quantum. He's such such revolutionary lines. You know, he was getting he was getting his men amped up, you know, like telling them they're the best, they're loyal, they're smart. That that Quantum, he changed. A lot. Pretty much trying to get the troops, you know, fired up, riled to take it to the quote unquote rebellion. Of course, Quantum will be in action, teaming up with the newcomer Nelson Jr. later on tonight against Shinaz Andoni and Sushi X. This man making his pay per view debut with only one win under his belt so far. And that came a couple weeks ago on Genesis when he speared William Rage through the barricade wall to get the count out. I mean, a poll on the website asked uh, what the CMV fan, which side the CMV fans thought looked the strongest thus far. The corporation got 11 votes, and the, the rebellion don't really know what they're calling themselves. They're kind of they're, they really are just a rebellion thus far. Only got three votes. So the CMV universe, they're not too sure about this uh, revolt <laughs> as it currently stands. They don't seem to have a whole lot of confidence in Sushi X. Hello, Sam. Fast and the Furious. These two men burst onto the scene here in CMV. Picking up a lot of wins. They were undefeated for a good uh, month and a half, I think. Until they took that loss in the Tag Team Cup live from Tokyo, Japan. Thanks to the corporation drugging them. Put some sort of, like, like I don't know, sleeping pills? Some sort of drugs in their water. Ended up throwing them off their balance. Allowing the corporation to advance to the semifinals where they themselves would lose. To uh, Zach Payne and Ryan Kent. And last but not least is this man, William Rage. The young upstart. A lot of people in the CMV universe getting behind this kid ever since his upset victory over Sunshine a couple weeks back. Been having a lot of beef with Ziegler as of late. Started when William Rage called out Ziegler after his first match. Said he liked how uh, how the newcomer, like how he was how he was in the ring, wanted to, wanted to get in there with him. Asked for a one-on-one -on -one match, showed him respect. Ziegler replied by attacking William Rage from behind after Rage said he could teach Ziegler a few tricks maybe. A few tips and tricks, you know, on the skateboard. But uh, Ziegler would attack him from behind. 
and then lock Rage inside of a trunk, or the trunk of a car, so that he couldn't make it to the Genesis match. He was able to get out, though, and then, of course, like I said earlier, Ziegler would end up defeating him by spearing him through the barricade wall to get a count-out victory. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Kicking off uh, Dark Carnival. Going to be Corporate Billy and Bob Storm starting things off. I know. Where is Echo, that son of a bitch? Send him a message, Tim. I am streaming today just for him. <sighs> a little rewind of just six nights ago on Fusion. These two went one-on-one -on -one with Bob Storm picking up the victory. And uh, just last night on Genesis, we actually saw Mike Grizzly completely dominate. I want to say dominate, but he was in control for the most part and ended up winning uh, against Furious Frank. So kind of evening the score between the Corporation, the Fast, and the Furious. Nice back suplex there by Billy. I thought the Super Bowl was over already. <sighs> well, I feel like an hour and a half ago I read on Facebook or something that one of the teams was up by like fucking 40 points or something. I thought it would be over by the time I started streaming with that kind of point difference. I don't know football though. Or hand egg. I don't care for it. Look at Bob Storm looking to kick the show off the right way. Beautiful moonsault off the top. We actually have a tweet here. First tweet of the night from Matt Jefferson. He says, tonight the corporation, tonight corporation, oh, you're going to have to repost that. Too many people talking in the chat. Rest in peace. <laughs> Please repost, Zach. I'm sorry. I don't know. I saw someone on uh, Facebook. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he was making a prediction then. Because he said one team, certain amount of points. The other team, certain amount of points. Maybe he was making a prediction. He didn't make it clear, though. Here we go. The tweet from Matt Jefferson accidentally got deleted. He reposted. It says, Tonight, Corporation, the moment will fall into the hands of the Rebellion as T and Lee win back their tag titles and Shanaz and Sushi beat the Lap Dogs. Tonight, Corporation marks the start of your downfall. There we go. Had some Twitter issues. A couple bugs to fix out. As Billy's trying to tag him, Mike Grizzly. There he is. And he finally gets out of the ring. <laughs> he used that tip, that Twitter extender app, Austin. That, I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I've seen it before. Allows you to extend your tweets. As the two big men now go at it. Back body drop sends Grizzly to the outside. Grizzly stepping over the top rope there. As Furious Frank is dazed. Now he's going to get taken to Suplex City. There's one. There's a second one. Can we get a third? Yes, we can. <sighs> Borton, I told you, I always go on Twitter every other week just to see what you're up to, baby. I always need to know what my board board's going, what's going on in his life. Frank looking to tag in. Oh, no, he goes for Bob again. Rage is yet to be tagged in. Now that has Ziegler. And Storm immediately going to get caught by the big man. Nice teardrop suplex. <clears throat> Look at this Grizzly just like tearing apart, stomping repeatedly on the chest of Bob Storm here right in front of his teammates. I mean, those are NXT superstars. Rip hardline. Fusion's too good for clowns. NXT literally has like seven clowns on it right now. Fusion, I don't, I don't, is there a clown on Fusion? I don't think there's a clown on Fusion. <clears throat> Tweet right here from Timmy Boy the Timster on Twitter. He says, CMV's first and hopefully only world war begins tonight. Join the revolution and join the fight to defeat the corporation. Hashtag join the fight sushi indeed. Trying to get members behind him, get other superstars behind him to take the fight to Triple H. Leave him out, he's not really a clown. He kind of just has face paint. His, his, his clown isn't a, a gimmick. He doesn't have a clown gimmick, I should say. Not even entirely sure that's clown face paint. Oh, Bob Storm with that sit out face buster. He and Frank both like to use, like a signature of the Fast and the Furious. Hooks the tree trunk sized leg of Mike Grizzly. There's Echo. I'm doing it just for you, baby. Can't can't have a pay-per-view without Echo in the chat. That's, that just wouldn't be right. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, here it comes. Tokyo Drift inbound. It's going to be the big man, Furious Frank, from the top. Right onto the ribs of Mike Grizzly. Hooks the leg. Billy and Ziegler are going to have to be quick to break up that pin or it might be over. And Billy and Ziegler both together break up the pin. <sighs> Your mum's a clown, mate. <laughs> Got him. Grizzly now. Irish whipping Frank out of the ring. Grizzly's got to make a tag, man. He's been getting the crap kicked out of him. As Rage just gingerly walks past. <clears throat> oh, Mike Grizzly, though, in a bad part of town. Look at this. Bob Storm and William Rage actually work together to take down uh, the wild man. It was like a, a lift up Enziguri or heel kick of some kind. This is a heel kick, not Enziguri. Please chill. Dashing. Mike Grizzly going to get out of the, the grasp of Frank there. And then it's rammed into the announce table. Look at this beautiful announce table. It's blessed. Random here, as always, for making this dank arena. And now Mike Grizzly just thrown face first right into the, the knee of Bob Storm. We're going to have a count out here, guys. Okay, reverse DDT somehow busts Mike Grizzly open. Guys, count is seven. I think Grizzly might get counted out here. Oh, my God. Eight. Unless Bob Storm whips him back in, this could be over. Nine. Oh, he's going to get the count out victory. And look at, look at the DX chops. Ten. Oh, my God. Ziegler didn't even get tagged in. <laughs> Meanwhile, Furious Frank doing the crotch chops in the ring. And the Fast and the Furious and William Rage bring home the victory via count out. Thanks to Rage and Bob Storm just beating the crap out of Mike Grizzly and not letting him get back into the ring. <laughs> That was, I love the I love the crotch chops by Furious Frank. That was just beautiful. Poor Ziegler though. He didn't get any screen time. He was being protected. He's not ready for uh, the big time just yet. Oh, rest in peace, man. <laughs> well, that was awesome. I mean, that wasn't a glitch though. That was a clean count out victory. In the tournament, it was a glitch. Please understand. I mean, look at those crotch chops. <laughs> he did two of them, too. He taunted like ten times. Here are your winners, what a win for the Fast and the Furious and William Rage here tonight. William Poor Ziegler. I feel bad for him, even though he's a dirty heel. Damn, Mike Grizzly busted open off a of reverse DDT. Doesn't get back into the ring in time. <laughs> That's all she wrote. I mean, Rage did bust uh, Mike Grizzly open. He did hit a couple moves. Did that tag team maneuver on, uh, on Grizzly with Bob Storm as well. I mean, I could see why Ziggler would be upset, but he also... He didn't get in there with Sheets. He didn't really, I mean, he was on a losing team, but he literally didn't do anything. He wasn't tagged in, didn't even hit a move. So, I mean, he broke up the pin. So, he really doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. It's not his fault. As we move on to our second match of the evening. Give him that dang pay-per-view attire, even though he's just ringside. Indeed, up next, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing the debut of the Headhunter, a man who spills blood for money. Of course, there's supposed to be a, uh, just got a message there. Not going to be able to read that, my friend, if you're watching the stream until afterwards, but I'll, I will read it. 
this was supposed to be a rematch between Andy Savage and Randy Borton from a couple weeks ago, in which Savage got the upset victory. But thanks to a backstage encounter in which Borton injured uh, Savage, don't know the extent of his injury. He did come out in a neck brace, though, earlier this week on Monday Night Fusion when he spoiled to the CMV universe um, that Borton's opponent here tonight would be indeed Headhunter, the seven foot one, 400 pound man. And Borton barely able to beat the newcomer Crow just six nights ago on Monday Night Fusion. I don't know how he's going to pull out two upsets. This is this honestly, uh, I don't even know, really know what to say because Headhunter is debuting. We haven't seen him at all. We haven't even really seen him out of the ring. We saw like a vignette a couple weeks ago that showed. I'm pretty sure now I know that it's this man. But he didn't really say anything. It just kind of showed him uh, backstage chilling. Had no idea who the guy was. But I'm uh, Brandy Borton's kind of the underdog heading into this one just because of the sheer size. Of Headhunter and the losing streak that Borton's been on, what was on before Monday Night Fusion. But he barely, like I said, he barely got past Crow. And look at this man. Seven foot one and 400 pounds. There you see Andy Savage not wearing his neck brace here tonight. Was this maybe a little ploy all along so they didn't have to step into the ring with Borton again? Hmm, mischievous. We have a tweet here from the Nacho Man, though, on Twitter. He says, oh, yeah, brother. Get the paramedics ready. Borton's not walking out of here tonight. His way to the ring. And, indeed, this will be a hard-fought battle for Mr. Money in the Bank. And especially with Savage ringside. Of course, this whole thing with Savage and Borton started when... Andy first appeared on the scene here in CMB. He was trying to start an alliance, not a tag team with Borton. Was stalking him. I call it stalking. He was ringside for his matches every week. Following around backstage. Threw nachos at him one time. Trying to get a tag team going. They, Borton finally said, okay, I'll team with you once. They did. And Borton got pinned in the match. Andy Savage the following week said that he feels as though Borton threw the contest on purpose. He purposely lost. And that led to uh, Andy calling out Borton for a match. And, of course, as I said, Andy, with the upset victory over Borton, ended up getting into a backstage uh, encounter in which Borton like, viciously beat Savage over the head with a chair. <laughs> and approaching the ring from Canada. <clears throat> and there he is, as always, living his uh, precious, his valuable money in the brief uh, money in the briefcase bank. I was about to say, money in the bank briefcase backstage, so nobody nobody steals it. Slithery Snake, Tim LaFave with his uh, fucking sticky fingers, always stealing everybody's titles. But he is indeed Mr. Money in the Bank. Has been on a, a big time losing streak since winning that briefcase at Battle Scars. Was able to pick up a victory over Crow just barely six nights ago. Can he uh, go over the fucking... This guy is huge. Rest in peace, Borton. I have faith, though. I'm a milkamaniac. Hello, Batman. I don't know if you saw the pre-show or not, but it was glorious. A <laughs> fish tank. Tim will just eat the fish, though. He'll just steal the fish. Here we go. <clears throat> Second match of the evening live at Dark Carnival from Salt Lake City, Utah. And the big man right out of the gate tries to charge board. Mr. Money in the Bank ain't having it, though. Look at these jabs. Goes for a knife edge. Was that a low blow attempt? Okay, and then he hits a headbutt to the shoulder. That was a little bit weird. This new mic is still killing me because the wires are all fucking tangled and it's ah, so annoying. Morton's having a tough time grappling this man. Every time he goes for a grapple, he just gets pushed away <laughs> like a little child. Oh, God, Morton. I have faith, though. I think Milkomania is running wild. This guy is jive fucking enormous, though. 
And of course, Savage ringside. It's pay-per-view debut, even though he's not wrestling. He's not wrestling, just ringside. And as I said, uh, this man, Headhunter, he spills blood for money, known for doing various uh, odd jobs. You know, you pay him, he'll do whatever you want. Decided to take his talents to the squared circle. He's got his first client and uh, the Savage Man. The Nacho Man, brother. I'm pretty sure Duo Maxwell, I think they might be the same height. I think Duo Maxwell's seven foot. Or maybe he's seven foot two. I think the tallest you can be in the game is seven foot two. I think Duo, yeah, he might be an inch taller than him. Don't know if you could really tell. <laughs> we have a tweet here from Better Than You on Twitter, a.k.a. Ziegler. He says, that it? That's the big bad corporation? Hunter, you need some new muscle immediately. Ziegler not even getting tagged in in the pre-show match. Fast and the Furious and William Rage winning by countout. Big time sidewalk slam there by Headhunter. Look at those rolls. Cops going to be sending me a PM about the back fat. Sending me an email. <sighs> Borton doesn't drink. Uh, Borton doesn't let other people drink his milk. Going for an angle slam. What a counter, though. That SmackDown, here comes the pain reversal. They don't have all of those old-ass reversals out of the game by 2K17. I'm going to cry. There's no reason those should still be in there. It's horrifying to look at. Looks like a big-time Yurinaj. Yurinagi slam. Yurinaj. That's what I just called it. Whatever that means. Oh, we have a response here by Billy on Twitter. The Billy, he says, at better than you, that's Mr. H to you, peasant. Damn, looks like that uh, mini alliance between the corporation and Ziegler isn't going to last very long as we get a first pinfall attempt of the match. That's got to be just crushing the, crushing the chest of Randy Borton, sucking all the air out of him. Rolling neck snap by uh, Headhunter, now the... Very athletic maneuver, but still a man his uh, side. Whoa, what a kick. Hooks the leg. One, two, just a two count. I think that might have been a signature. Borton gets just completely no-selling, as usual. Vintage Borton right back to his feet. Going to eat a penalty backbreaker now. Borton to his feet now. Headhunter goes for an Irish whoop. Counter by Borton, though. Puts him out in the ring apron. Crack to the jaw. And look at Borton like, ah, oh, why I ought to. Hello, Zentrix. <laughs> oh, my God, Borton. What are you thinking? Goes for a scoop slam or something there. High angle dip grab, perhaps. Headhunter drops out of it. Nice reverse DDT on the outside. Borton has to put over that young talent. I mean, he actually buried Crow on uh, Fusion, so maybe he'll bury Headhunter here tonight. Look at Borton just going wild. The Texas Jazz, knife head chops. Headhunter rolls back into the ring. Belly to belly, a monstrous one at that. Oh, my God, what is this? No, oh, no. All the weight right down out of the chest. No, but Borton kicks out somehow, some way. Jesus, that that is 400 pounds crashing down onto the ribs and chest of Mr. Money in the Bank, and somehow he kicks out. Borton's got to dig deep and find that golden shovel of his. He's got to got to get rid of that broken plastic spork that he's been holding onto as of late. Oh, leg, uh, double leg driver to the nether region there. That's pretty rude as Andy Savage claps ringside. <laughs> Fondal going to make his CMV return, confirmed. Future world champion. Del Dego. The ring bell dinged. Oh, again, all the way. This time a seated position onto the chest. This is just, God, ref, end this match. This is crazy. Borton's still fighting, but... Oh, and look at this! Borton! With the uh, fucking 
face buster thing I forgot the name of because no one's hit it in a while. Only a two count. We, Borton has hit that, I think, only twice this season. It's a face buster of some kind. Single underhook face buster. That, uh, there it is. Just took me a minute. Oh, it goes for the super kick. You missed it, though. Headhunter a little bit quicker on the draw. Snapmare. Now to a chin lock. This is Xbox One. Cool underscore big. Are you cool? Are you big? <sighs> big time. You're Nike Slam for a second time in this match. And Headhunter backing up. Observing the situation. Looking at the carnage he's caused here tonight. <laughs> I wish they still had the random cutscenes. Hulk Hogan try to get the naughty guys back together again. Who did he recruit? American Justice or something? He came out with Ringo or I don't I don't know. That that odd ass cutscene pen attempt by Headhunter. Oh and he got it! Oh god. Rest in peace, Borton. I don't even know what he got pinned off of because I was looking at the chat. God damn, Headhunter coming out here and just picking apart Mr. Money in the Bank limb by limb. <laughs> well, may be at the I mean, I was behind the Milkamaniac. But this man, 7 foot 1, 400 pounds, just too much to handle. For Randy Borton coming off that epic collision against Crow a few days. Look at that. I'm surprised Borton kicked out of this right here. All of that weight right down onto the ribs and chest. And then he just lays on him. <laughs> Let's see what happened during that incredible matchup. Oh my god, this headset. It's really starting to piss me off. <laughs> Borton tried though even hit his single unhook face plus here tried to hit his super kick at one point but vintage Borton didn't botch it but he couldn't get it off wasn't able to hit it you only missed the first two matches Maury we just saw a headhunter put down Borton All right, it, was a, it was a sit out sidewalk slam that finished Mr. Money in the Bank here tonight not, not surprised after all the damage Borton took I'm pretty sure a few people answered you back, uh, Batman. I can tell you right now, Headhunter doesn't have facial hair. <laughs> His face paint doesn't have facial hair, though. From Miami, apparently. Miami, Utah. No, Salt Lake City, Utah is where we're live from here tonight for Dark Carnival. And it's time to start the main card, ladies and gentlemen. The first of two Hell in a Cell matches. And the Vixens Championship is going to be up for grabs as Cassie Maverick defends against not one, not two, not three, not four, but five challengers. And I'm going to fucking... Mm, this headset. Just take a breath, Dashing. Don't let the, don't let the headset get to you. Actually, Mike Grizzly was the one that got counted out. So technically, he's the one that fucked up. Okay, we want Amber Briggs.
Jay Devine does, punk. That's who wrestles in a polo, bitch. <laughs> Fair enough, Porton. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, here we go, folks. An action-packed night still to come. Main card, getting things started with the first of two Hell in a Cell matches. Of course, we got two Steel Cage matches here tonight as well, hence the name Dark Carnival. It's going to be a fun ride, but it is Cassie Maverick defending her championship first title match of the night as well. Five championships on the line. And she does indeed have to defend against five challengers, one of which is her close friend and ally, Fury. We got Amber Briggs in there, the former and first ever Vixens champion. Kristen Page, the woman that cast him ever beat live from Tokyo, Japan. Jay Devine, the woman who's been an absolute tear these past couple of months. I think she's on a six-win streak right now because she was a part of the winning uh, team on Monday Night Fusion. And Quinn Bell, the newcomer, the dark horse of this match, won a triple threat to qualify for this Armageddon Hell in a Cell. Uh. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> <All right. laughs> A divine arrow from the top of the cell through the announce table, please. And the person who's on the announce table moves, so Jay Devine dies a horrible and bloody death. Oh, it's Timmy Boy's favorite CMV Vixen. The beautiful, the lovely, the dominant Amber Briggs. I'm a big Briggs fan. I don't know who I voted for, actually, on the website. We have a tweet here, though, from Real Aura, who is very vocal on uh, this past Monday Night Fusion. She says, whoever walks out of this match with the Vixen's title better be on high alert. Because she and the CMV universe will hashtag see the colors real soon. Aura and CMV developmental right now. We've yet to see her, but she, like I said, she was very vocal this past Monday night, sending out multiple tweets targeted at a, a few Vixens, most of the Vixens, actually, everybody. Pretty cocky. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, Tim, sing it with me. The first ever Vixens champion in CMV history held the title for four months before losing it to Cassie in a fatal four-way at CyberSlam. Failed to get it back the following month at Exodus. Despite dominating 90% of the match, Cassie had uh, the wherewithal, the resiliency to power through and somehow retain. And these six Vixens are making history here tonight. They will be locked inside of the Hell in a Cell. First Vixen to gain pinfall or submission will walk out as champion. It's not elimination. Introducing the challenger from wherever she <laughs> I didn't know you were such an expert on uh, Tyler Breeze's eyebrows, Batman. That's good to know, though. Thank you. I think my bias pick here tonight, though, for this match, I, again, I don't even remember who I fucking voted for on the... I think I voted for Cassie, actually. And that, that is my pick. I'm a big Cassie Maverick fan. I'm a big fan of the Cowgirl. I'm a big fan of Amber Briggs, too. Those are probably my two picks. Anything goes, though. Anything can happen here in CMV. Here comes the Apprentice of Sunshine. 
Sunshine be defending his Anarchy title in on the night against Hayden inside of a steel cage. We have a tweet here from Jake Holmes. He says, let's not talk about Vixens. Let's talk about me. I need my time to shine sooner than later. Hashtag Hardcore Holmes. We've heard from him a couple times over the past few weeks. Here comes. <laughs> Please chill. Here comes Quinn Bell. Like I said, the dark horse of this matchup just debuted a couple months ago here. And CMV won a triple threat match on Genesis to qualify for the last spot. Beating Christy and Danielle Ward. And of course the lights are going to shut off. As we await the. Uh, we await the arrival of Fury the Urban Warrior. Close friend and ally of Cassie Maverick here tonight. Gotta wonder if they're working together in this uh, match. Try to take out everybody else and then go for each other. Fury and Cassie Maverick both uh, have said in interviews these past few weeks that they're friends, they're allies, but in a title match like this, in this kind of situation, friendship has got to be out the window. It's got to be put on hold. It's all about that championship. <clears throat> Fury and Cassie Maverick having their problems with fear as of late. We'll see DJ Moore finally go one-on-one -on -one with the old decrepit bastard later on tonight. <laughs> Look at those physics, though. My goodness. 2K, what have you done? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm... Hey, Austin. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know what I mean? <laughs> big gray stain. I'll show you a big gray stain, bitch. And last but not least, folks. Yeah, it's Jay Devine. Because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, her and Quinn Bell must be really good friends. They got the matching head things. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't even know. She also has a foxtail. The cheeky Japanese girl fighting in the polo. Austin's favorite. Also got them uh, jeans on. Them Dave Turner jeans. She is a furry, yes. Exactly. I mean, hey. Whatever floats your boat, you know. Take, take your pants off. You know what I'm saying? I forgot Jade because I thought I put Fury out first before uh, Jade. But I guess uh, 2K16 says nah. <laughs> we have a tweet here from the phenomenal alone wait what the is that what that says the phenomenal one i'm, I'm an idiot rest in peace she says uh let's hope my woman amber briggs gets what is rightfully hers back tonight the is that aj styles twitter handle rest in peace <laughs> and here she comes, last but not least, debuting a uh, cheeky new attire for the pay-per-view. Hint, hit to you, uh, you're a blight. It's the best I could do because the things you sent me weren't in the game. The cowgirl, though, the reigning CMV Vixens champion for two and a half months now. One of the most resilient Vixens ever seen in... Oh, it's Amber's boyfriend? All right. I get you. I got you, cuh. <laughs> SpongeBob versus Xander Slate confirmed for uh, Ascendance. 
She's got that Vixens title in hand. Here we go. It is a free-for-all versed, versed, versed Vixen to get the uh, pinfall or submission will walk out as champion. <sighs> and right away, oh, we have a tweet here from Zentrix. Don't know who exactly that is, but on Twitter he says, Super Bowl and CMB Dark Carnival Live. Oh, my God, what a time to be alive. He's a poet, apparently, though. An absolute chaos right out of the gate as we expected. No disqualifications either. Obviously, no count outs. As Briggs goes for uh, Jay Devine, we see Fury with a scratch down the back of Quinn Bell and Kristen Page charging to the Vixens champ herself. <laughs> Irish whip by Maverick sends Page off the ropes right into a spine buster. Meanwhile, Briggs in a take the fight to Jay Devine, ducks her out of the ring. It's not false count anywhere, though. Pinfall submission doesn't have to count inside of the ring for this match to end. The Urban Warrior, Irish whipping Quinn Bell right into uh, Kristen Page there. Meanwhile, Jay Devine with a shot off the cell wall to Briggs. Oh, and here we go. Catapult. Cheeky Japanese girl just might have knocked her lights out. And Quinn Bell, I think, might be the tallest Vixen in this match. Only by a couple inches. Strongest. Got to give it to Briggs. There's nobody. I don't even think... The entire roster, men included, Briggs is very strong. It's incredible, her strength. We've seen on display multiple times. As I said, resiliency-wise, and my pick is still Cassie. Incredible, incredible champion. It's going to be hard, though. It's going to be hard for her here. Never know when a pin's going to go down. Got to stay on high alert. There really isn't a waiting list. It's kind of just called the waiting list because in 2K15, of course, we only had 25 spots, so... That's why it's known as the waiting list. I just didn't care to change it. Uh, if you post your cause name on the on the list, though, I'll download them eventually. You won't have to wait very long. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Amber Briggs again tumbling to the outside. Kristen Page going after her now. Sledgehammer brought in the mix. It's just chilling there. Jay Devine. She gets ducked out into the ring apron. Quinn Bell going for a cracks her the jaw. Nice green attire by, uh, on Kitty here tonight. Oh, first pinfall attempt by Fury on Cassie Maverick. There you go. On display right out of the gate. Fury putting the friendship with Cassie Maverick aside. She knows what's on the line. The two have fought before. Fury's debut match, actually. She fought Cassie Maverick in a losing effort. Another tweet here from Jake Holmes, who says, We all have demons. It's just some of us. Oh, GG, Timmy Boy posted that huge-ass link. Whisper, Tim. Oh, wait a minute. Pin attempt by Kristen Page on Quinn Bell. That was a close two count, I think. The referee counts a lot slower inside uh, cages. Like, one, two, three. Kristen Page saving Jay Devine there from a probable defeat. Irish whip sends the cheeky Japanese girl right into the corner. Look at how Cassie Maverick like dodged. <laughs> dodged the incoming divine. Oh, here it is. Jake Holmes saying, we all have demons. It's just some of us choose to show them. Hashtag Dark Carnival. Hashtag Beast Within. Amber Briggs just stomping on the toes there of Kristen Page. That's pretty rude. Meanwhile, Cassie Maverick, the cowgirl. Okay, why did the screen shake like that? Why did it shake like that again? Oh my god, what is happening? Earthquake here in Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> what has happened? Cassie Maverick now with the sledgehammer brings the cracker down to the chest. I'm gonna suck the air right out of Paige, the apprentice of sunshine. Oh, bow and arrow. She looks called this hog tide. Will Kristen Page tap out though? Wait a minute. The fireman's carry take over there by Fury, but she can't get the pin as the referee is preoccupied with the submission attempt. By Cassie. Might have been able to get her the win there, the Urban Warrior. Oh, here's a pin attempt by Maverick now. Ah, uh, broken up by Quinn Bell. Oh, look at this slaying the dreamer. She likes to call this pop-up power bomb off the ropes. Hooks the leg quickly. One. Two. Three. She got it. She got it. Fury is your new Vixen's champion. Hitting Quinn Bell via slaying the Dreamer. That match ended a lot quicker than I thought it would. Cassie Maverick preoccupied with a neck crank. Tim's favorite move on 
on someone. I think it was Jay Devine. And Fury slaying the Dreamer New Vixen's champion crown. Nobody able to break up the pin in time. What <laughs> definitely was chaotic. The short time this match lasted. We saw the sledgehammer, a couple people thrown to the cell wall. Fury indeed did get the pinfall on Quinn Bell via slaying the dreamer, that brutal pop-up power bomb. <laughs> Everyone was in the ring. They were preoccupied with hitting moves, though. Cassie's probably jaws on the on the on the canvas right now. She can't believe Fury. Here's the ending right here. Slaying the Dreamer. Rebounds off the ropes. Nasty pop of power on there. You see Jay Devine actually hitting her signature. That standing uh, corkscrew moonsault on Amber Briggs. And Cassie had a hold of Kristen Page. And just as Page breaks free, the ref's hand comes down to the canvas for three. I did not get them yet, 7-2 soon, though. I will. And there you see your new Vixens champion, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Cassie Maverick. Don't know if she's going to shake Fury's hand, hug her, or if she's going to be mad. That's quite a match, though. Cassie get a rematch against Fury one-on-one. -on -one? That would be a good match to see. Nonetheless, what a night for this young woman. Fury winning the Armageddon Hell in a Cell to kick off the main card. New champion crowned. <laughs> I mean, mighty dude, definitely, 100%. <clears throat> Here we go, folks. Up next, the dreaded Hell in a Cell gets raised up and the cold and calculated steel cage comes down. It is our first of two cage matches tonight. The Anarchy Championship on the line. It is Sunshine. It is Hayden. One-on-one, -on -one, locked inside the structure. Left with their demons. Left with the rage that they share between them. <clears throat> this all started uh, the night after... Cyber Slam, <laughs> GG, when Hayden returned from a long injury, about four months he had out, thanks to an attack by the corporation and <clears throat> the authority of NXT. He came back, though, and Sunshine immediately went right up to him and said, I'm sick of you old-timers coming back and stealing the, the hype, the, the spotlight, the chances that I deserve. I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. I won't accept it. Hayden responded by smacking him in the face, hitting a beautiful catchphrase, that vintage maneuver of Hayden. The feud would carry on for a couple weeks. Sunshine saying he's going to bring out the, the old Hayden, going to get the dark side. Because Hayden, of course, saying he's been, he was treated by doctors. He had therapy. You know, he's not cutting himself anymore. Thank God. He, he feels better. He's happy again. Sunshine saying, no, no, no. I'm going to get the demons back out of you. Come to the dark side. And inside of the elimination chamber at Exodus, Hayden actually managed to pin Sunshine. Just giving, just feeding more fuel to the fire between these two. And it's coming to a head here tonight. Hayden defeating Sunshine a couple weeks ago on Fusion to earn this opportunity. The Anarchy title, honestly, an afterthought, though, at this point. These two just want to tear into each other, prove who the true CMV legend really is. But indeed, Hayden has an opportunity to fatten up his uh, resume even more. First ever undisputed champion, three-time undisputed champion, Royal Rumble winner, King of the Ring, Intercontinental champion, looking to become Anarchy champion now. Of course, Sunshine on his eighth championship reign. 
This is his first defense. Didn't have to defend inside of the Elimination Chamber. Hardcore, you know, a.k.a. Anarchy Championship. Jake Combs here uh, saying towards Sunshine he'd like to fight him sometime. Sunshine is a man of few mysteries. I'd love to fight him sometime in my career. Indeed, Sunshine, a fan favorite. He is a CMB legend in his own right. Two-time first ever Intercontinental Champion. Two-time World Champion. Two-time United States Champion. Be Undertaker twice at WrestleMania. Honestly, I think Sunshine's going to lose here tonight just so he can win it back. Because, you know, he's got that OCD. He needs to do everything in Paris to two. I'm pretty sure I voted for Hayden on this. I'm a big Hayden fan. I think Hayden's got this one. That's my bias pick. It's going to be close, though. It's going to be brutal. Oh, look at this tweet here from uh, Ziegler. He says, at Triple H, tomorrow night, I want one of your redneck hicks in the ring. Or both. I don't care. Not like either one of them can fight. They cost me here tonight. Ziegler calling out uh, the corporation there. Maybe, maybe he wants to join the rebellion, or maybe he's just, he just wants to get the bad blood uh, between them out of the way for what happened earlier tonight. Of course, Ziegler not even getting tagged in. Mike Grizzly getting counted out in the pre-show. Ziegler better be careful, though. Doesn't want to be going after the corporation right now. Triple H is already on edge. Here he comes, though. The people's champion, the fan favorite, arguably the greatest CMV superstar in the history of this company. <laughs> I mean, he's got that dank wife beater on. You know he means business. You know when someone comes out here in a wife beater? I mean, it's not quite Ringo Max level because it doesn't have sweat all over it or anything. But, I mean, wearing a wife beater just automatically makes you a true badass. I wonder if Hayden beats his wife. That, that's, that's, that's a story for another day. Hayden versus his wife at Ascendance confirmed. Of course, still to come tonight, our second Hell in a Cell match. Two-man power trip. Defend their tag titles against Tia and Lee. And later on tonight, our main event, it's Voodoo Insane inside of this very steel cage for the world title. But right now, the Anarchy Championship is on the line. And here... We go. Sunshine and Hayden going to tear into one another. Irish rip right out of the gate by Hayden. Catches Sunshine on the rebound with a shoulder block. <laughs> Borton loves when I use the term frenemy. Remember that? Jeremy Blake, Mike Miles. Good times, Borton. Good times. They were frenemies. Borton loved it. It was his favorite storyline. Hayden dropping out of the scoop slam attempt there. Hits off a nice reverse TDT. Shining Wizard right to the jaw. Pulls him out of the corner for a nice short arm clothesline. If you want your call on the show, all you have to do is follow the simple steps that Timmy Way will post for you in just a moment. Join the website. It's pretty simple. It's easy. If you got a computer or phone or anything. GG, <sighs> Tim. GG. There we go. There it is. There's the link to the website and the simple steps that you have to follow. Oh, look at that chop right to the throat. Making it hard for the Anarchy Champion to breathe. Again, this is Sunshine's first defense of the Anarchy title. Won it at Cyber Slam after he was voted in by the CMV Universe. Actually tied with Shanaz and Doty, making a triple threat. Ended up winning the throning Chet Taylor as champion. And Sunshine now just waiting for the A-list to get back to. See, gets caught with an elbow, though. Stagger said, but it's Superman punch now. Hiccups. Rest in peace. Please chill. And again, a steel cage match. You heard Edith before the match started. You can win by pinfall, submission, or escape in the cage. And Hayden just tried to do right there. A little bit, a little bit premature, though, as Sunshine catches him with a back suplex. And now the uh, man with the broken smile going to try his hand at getting the hell out of here. You want to spend as little time inside of a steel cage as you have to. This, uh... This structure will change your career in ways you do not want it to. From the top rope, hit him with a nice elbow. Sunshine actually just won a steel cage match uh, back at CyberSlam. The very night he won the Anarchy Championship against Levi Marta. Won by superplexing Marta off the cage and then exiting through the door, which is another way you can exit through the door. Surfboard stretch now cinched in. Submission maneuver, not a resting hold. Hayden not going to tap out, though, at least not yet. Now brings the back right down onto the knee. Does sunshine. Hello, dynamic. 
<clears throat> Up next, following this bout, guys, we'll see the long-awaited one-on-one rematch between Fear and DJ Moore as Hayden looks to escape the cage. He's a quick. He's a, definitely a lot quicker than Sunshine. I think he's pretty sure he's one of the, if not the smallest men on the Monday Night Fusion roster. I don't know about NXT. And he's very quick. As Sunshine, he's getting up there. He's getting up there as the uh, Anarchy Champion. Hayden stops him just before he can climb to the top, though. Grabs him by the tights and just rips him off the wall. His head ricocheting off the canvas. <laughs> I'm actually six foot three, Borton. Rest in peace. Irish whip by the A-list. You're going to catch Sunshine with the rebound? No. Sunshine, though. Nice sit out face buster. Grabbing Hayden by the hair. Flips him over now. Oh, Sunshine. I thought he was going for his uh, rapid fire curb stomps. No, a stomp. Right to the forehead, though. And Sunshine now lifting Hayden up. What's he looking for here? Kick to the midsection. Forearm doesn't connect, but Hayden sells it anyhow. Now vintage Sunshine with the uh, somersault cutter. <laughs> oh, look at these rapid-fire elbows to the back of Hayden's head. Allows Sunshine to get free of whatever hit. Oh, and now just thrown face first into the steel cage wall. And Sunshine going to take this opportunity to try to escape yet again. He's getting up there. Will the challenge be able to stop him? Yes, he will. Again, going to grab him by the tights and rip him off the wall. Sunshine can take many more hits like this. <clears throat> We've seen both these men try to escape the cage multiple times. Wait a minute. Justice is served there by Hayden. Vintage. Uh, Kiley, but Sunshine immediately back to his feet. Pushes Hayden out of the corner. Kick to the midsection. Crack to the jaw, though, by Hayden. Another crack to the jaw. Keep thinking he's going for his finisher. Has Sunshine up against the wall now. Hard Irish whip right into the cell wall. Knocks Sunshine's lights out. Hooks the leg. One. Two. Just a two count, though. First pinfall attempt of the match. I was going to say, uh, both these guys have tried to escape the cage multiple times already, but you can't win by pinfall or submission. Oh, uh, here we go. Hayden going to try to do just that. Looking for the final cut. On the Anarchy Champion, if he hit this, it might be over. If he hits this, it might be over, I should say. Bam! Drives the neck right into the canvas. I think he's going to try to escape, though. No, he goes for the pin. Hooks the leg. One. Two. No! Just a two count, though, the Anarchy Champion. Too resilient to go down after just one finisher. <sighs> Hayden going to have to figure out another way to win it. Like, i.e. escaping the cage, as he's trying to do now. But Sunshine back to his feet already. Turns Hayden around right into a suplex. Oh, uh, here we go. Here are the rapid fire curb songs by the man with the broken smile over and over and over and over again at the chest. Gonna go for the pin. One, two, no, just a two count. What a steel cage match has been so far. Both men using the uh, cage wall as a weapon. Both men have tried to escape multiple times. Hayden now with an Irish whip. Puts the Anarchy Champ in the corner. Comes up from behind. Was looking for here. Puts him on the top. <clears throat> Sunshine. What the? Oh, God. Big time back suplex. Bam. Lands right in his neck. Turns him inside out even. And Hayden looks like he hurt himself just as much as he did Sunshine on that one. Going to try to escape here. Sunshine could be down for the count. Hayden's climbing. Hayden's climbing, guys. He's going to get out. Hayden's got it. Hayden's got it. The A-lister is your new CMV Anarchy Champion. As Sunshine is forced to watch on. Can do nothing more. That brutal back suplex in the top rope. Too much for Sunshine to handle. Could not get up in time. And we have a new Anarchy Champion here tonight. What a match and what a victory for the A-lister. <sighs> Hayden, after hitting that final cut, couldn't get the job done, realized he had to do something big to try and keep the man with the broken smile down. Nasty back from the top, turned Sunshine inside out, kept him down long enough for the A-lister to scale the wall and become our new Anarchy Champion.
There you see the final cut, which only got Hayden a two count, as close as it may be. Sunshine would fire back, immediately following with these rapid fire curve stomps. That was enough to get the job done. The job done for him, though. Blah, 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 blah. And Hayden once again, ladies and gentlemen, with some gold around his waist. Though when he came back, he told Sunshine, I'm not here for any championships. I'm not here for the world title. I'm not here for your Anakin. I'm not here to steal your spotlight. I'm here for one reason, one reason only. To take out the corporation. Hayden said, Sunshine, you don't stop bugging me. I'm going to have to take that title from you. Teach you a lesson. And that's what he did here tonight. Taught Sunshine a lesson. Two out of 54. <laughs> Your custom call, Glad Man? You can indeed. All you have to do is go to the website and sign up, which Timmy Boy will post for you. Uh, all you got to do is sign up, register. It's simple. It takes a couple minutes. And then post about your cause name. Or post about your cause. I should say his name, a bio if you want to, on the waiting list. And I will get around to downloading him soon. There you see Hayden looks good with that anarchy title around his waist. He can barely stand, though. Quite a brawl. What a battle against Sunshine. And hey, now looking to move on to the corporation. Maybe he'll join the rebellion. We'll have to wait and see. <clears throat> and here we go up next to the long awaited rematch between Fear and DJ Moore. This all started when. The family approached Cassie Maverick, offered her their support, their, offered an alliance, which Cassie ended up agreeing to. And Fear uh, took exception to that, ended up attacking DJ Moore brutally, putting him on the shelf for two months. <laughs> Vintage Tim. Uh, but Fear attacking DJ costed he and Elijah Stewart their rematch for the CMV World Tag Team titles. DJ Moore returning, though, earlier this month and uh, demanding. A match against Fear, in which Fear gladly accepted, looking to finish the job here tonight. But last week on Monday Night Fusion, this feud, uh, this rivalry between these two men, bad blood is spilled over when DJ Warren and Elijah Stewart tried to save uh, Megan Cooper from a brutal beatdown at the hands of her, her ex-boyfriend, Daryl Richards. But Fear came out to the assistance of Richards, forming some sort of unholy alliance. They both took down the family. And, of course, Megan Cooper has uh, been severely injured. Still no official word on what her condition exactly is. We know that she has suffered some sort of ma major injury to her neck. We'll just have to wait and see what's going on with that. But here tonight, Moore has a chance at redemption, a chance at revenge as he takes on the, uh, the old-timer, the old bastard, Colonel Sanders, of course, as the CMV universe likes to refer to him as. <clears throat> and of course, Elijah Stewart will be ringside here tonight for DJ Moore. Speaking of Elijah Stewart, he has a tweet right now. He says, uh, we got to blow this place up. We got this building hyped. I got DJ Moore hyped, and he can handle the rest. Let's go. Hashtag Dark Carnival Stewart. Indeed, ringside for his friend and his tag team partner. Former tag team champions together again. Didn't... Uh, Never got their rematch because of Fear's uh, attack on Moore. Just put him on the shelf for two months. This is personal between these two now. It's been taken beyond the ring. And I can assure you only one of these guys will be walking out of Salt Lake tonight. Cornfields and white people. Hey, sounds like Tim's kind of place, man. Cornfields and white people. This is not, I mean, he has a cowboy hat. I don't know if that makes him a cowboy necessarily. This man is fear. Claims to be, uh, I don't know if he's really uh, possessed by a demon. By a, we know he's been in contact with a, you know, quote-unquote, in contact with a demon. Look at those red eyes, though. Oh, look, a tweet here from Jay Devine. She says, that Hell in a Cell was garbage. I deserve a one-on-one -on -one match with the soon-to-be-defeated champion. Jay Devine not involved in the decision 
Armageddon Hell in a Cell match. Fury, the new Vixen's champion, though, pitting Quinn Bell. Obviously thinks she wants, she deserves a one-on-one uh, -on -one championship match. But Cassie Maverick, first in line, gets her rematch. And here comes the family. It is DJ Moore against Fury here tonight. I'm pretty sure I said Salt Lake, not Lick. I mean, if that's what you're, if that's what you heard, Tim, I mean, you know, you do you, boo boo. If you want to lick the salt, I'm not going to judge you. Spoiler alert: He is the guy from uh, <laughs> from Witcher Three, confirmed. Oh, Tim Lafave just liked Jay Divine's tweet right there. He favored it. He loved it. And he retweeted it as well. He also copied and pasted it, printed it out, and put it on his wall. He was handing out flyers all day on the streets, trying to get people, you know, behind Jay Divine's claim. <clears throat> Here we go. Fear DJ Moore one on one. Three months in the making. Moore looking to get his revenge. Fear looking to put down DJ and the family once and for all so he can finally get to Cassie Maverick. Get back that amulet he wants so bad. That apparently is the source of his power. Without it, is the energy is draining. His power is draining. <laughs> Rest in peace. Jawbreaker there by Fear. And indeed, in their first encounter, Fear did uh, defeat DJ Moore when he first showed up on the scene here in CMV. He beat Moore one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, he attacked, I think he attacked Connor McCulloch, didn't he, or something? Moore was supposed to fight, and Fear just beat the shit out of Connor. Chucked him down the ramp, took his place, ended up beating Moore the following week is when he injured him. Took him out for two months. Fear now. Laying DJ Moore up against the ropes. Irish Whip going to send the big man. Rebounded. Goes for a single leg drop kick. The ice cold can was looking like. I mean, he's got, he's got the Egyptian cotton leather on right there. He's trying to imitate the best. Rest in peace, Cole Savage. Always in my thoughts. Oh, Bullplex now inbound. Strength of Moore on display. Just whips him across the canvas. Across the mat. I mean, Suns doesn't even play Smite. What are you talking about, Tim? What? Suns doesn't even play Smite. <laughs> who, who, I don't know who you're thinking of. You know, Suns isn't. Uh, I think you're thinking of Alvius, which who is also Scottish. Rest in peace. Lifts fear to his feet. Oh, what more is going for there? He gets kicked, kicked to the gut for his troubles, though. Now hard Irish whip into the turnbuckle. Takes a couple steps back. Bam! Double boots right to that temple. What, Tim? How is that a joke? What? Can't really do sarcasm in the chat, Tim. Rest in peace. <laughs> it is a bad joke. Rip. It's okay, Tim. We still love you. Look at that. Fear just unleashing on more. <laughs> I mean, I'm, st I'm still a big Borton fan. He'll get back on track. He'll get back on track. I believe him. He's Mr. Running in the Bank. A future, well, possibly a future... CMV World Heavyweight Champion. Hopefully he's not the first man in CMV history to cash in and lose. That would suck. Rip Borton, we love you. You the best. I changed a lot. <sighs> Fear all over more. So far, gets caught with the European uppercut there as Elijah Stewart watches ringside. Don't know if he'll get involved or not. Hopefully not. And a clean bout between these two to see who, who truly is the better because Fear kind of caught more off guard in their first encounter. Again, he was supposed to fight Conor McCulloch. Was preparing for that man. Nice elbow drop there by Fear. <laughs> there, we'll give the Money in the Bank briefcase to Jay Divine. All right, there we go. Morton will give the Money in the Bank briefcase to Jay Divine, and everything's settled. Pump handle on Neckbreaker there. I looked at the chat for a second. It was something of a pump handle. Gets a two count for him. First windfall attempt of the match. Oh, nice snap swinging Neckbreaker. And Fear now taking a couple laps. Going to the top. What is he looking for up here? 
Might be going for his finisher already? No, a moonsault still beautifully executed. His finisher, of course, from the top is a is a nasty crossbody. We've only seen him in, in, in ring competition once, and that was against Moore a couple months ago. This more to his feet now. Does fear the man in the bow tie? Irish Whip puts him in the corner. What is he looking for here? Reverse STO right into the second turnbuckle. And Moore is just getting dominated here tonight, guys. And again, fear to the top row. For a man his age, you don't know exactly how old he is, but he's definitely a, a bit older. Definitely a lot older than Moore. He's just beating the shit out of him right now. Snapmare there by DJ. <laughs> Another Northern Lights suplex. That was a wrist lock suplex, actually. Oh, Fear going for some sort of maneuver there. I think it was a signature. If it was, Moore able to counter. What a headbutt. Oh, here goes Bloodline. Moore out of nowhere. That had to be a signature he counters. I don't know. How, oh, there's no other way Moore got a signature. He's been getting his ass kicked. One, two, just a two count, though. And Moore shouldn't be too shocked. That's the first big movie's hit in this match. Though it caught Fear off guard. 2.9999. If he can keep up with the assault, goes for the finisher. Fear ain't having it, though. Kick to the midsection. Irish Whip now puts more in the corner. And the man in the Egyptian cotton leather a second time. Reverse STO into the second turnbuckle. Can't take, can't take too many more of those. Might have a couple cracked teeth at the end of this uh, pay-per-view here tonight. As Fear from the top. What is he looking for? He's just perched up there. Stock and elbow right to the heart. <clears throat> oh, and this is what Fear was going for before. A release Tiger suplex on DJ Moore, who's a good 300 pounds. And will that be enough to keep the former World Tag Team Champion down? One, two, only a two count, though. And Moore struggles to get back to his feet. Gets caught with a punch to the back. And a third reverse STO into the turnbuckle. I said reverse. I said release Tiger Bomb, didn't I? I said release something else, didn't I? It probably was a botch. I wasn't paying attention. I meant to say Tiger Bomb. I don't know what I said, though. I don't even know what I said. I know I said release. What did I say after that, Rip? GG memory. Fear now grabbing more by the hair. What is he looking for now as he pulls him to the center? Did I say suplex? Rest in peace. Tiger suplex, you know, Tiger Bomb. Close enough. And now Fear to the top might be looking to end things with that crossbody. Right or he's just going to sit perched again. Oh, there we go. He needed to regain a, a, a little bit of stamina. And more. Don't get to your feet. There it is. Nasty crossbody. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. And Fear going to bring home the victory over more. Yet again, easily might I add. Moore got a little bit of a comeback late into the bout, but that was really all fear. Check out what happened during this match. <laughs> Why would you ever vote for DJ Moore, Austin? You're a fool. You are a fool. He's a tag team competitor. He's not supposed to be in singles competition, but... This, 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 the bad blood between these two has got, it's gotten so personal. Moore had no choice. Unfortunately, he just didn't have it in him to get the win here tonight. Might still be a little bit injured, a little bit of ring rust still on him. Or perhaps Fear is just, he's just damn better. He gets the win tonight, though, and now his sights are set on Cassie Maverick. I don't think the family's going to go down that easy, though. I don't think DJ Moore's just going to lose and be like, all right, you can get her now. She's all yours, GG. What? When did DJ Moore beat Payne, Saint, Max? When did he ever beat any of those guys? Oh, Tim. I thought you were talking about Moore. I was going to say, what, Tim? Rest in peace. Yeah, but DJ Moore is still a tag wrestler, Austin. I mean, Ringo, Ringo got out from, uh, you know, under the naughty guy banner. Went out into his, his lonesome, you know. Want to go out on his own. In fact, Ringo Max later on tonight being triple threat action. He and Duo Max will challenging Jackson Jordan for the international championship. Here's the ending, though. Perched on the top, Moore gets caught with a nasty crossbody that puts him down for the one, two, three. 
I mean, sign. Please get out of the way. And there you see it. The man with the bow tie. Look, it's threatening the referee. Come on. Haven't you done enough? Can't you just accept the win? <clears throat> and indeed, folks, up next, the dreaded, the brutally career threatening, the career ending Hell in a Cell comes down for the second and last time tonight as two man power trip look to defend their CMV World Tag Team titles against the former champs, T and Lee, who uh, Zach Pan Ryan can't beat live from Tokyo, Japan just two weeks ago to win those titles. Shocking the CMV Universe by um, returning. Hadn't seen either of them since WrestleMania. Ended up winning the whole damn tournament, bringing home that beautiful trophy, the nice paycheck. And on that same night, after going through three other teams, dethroned T and Lee, it ended up being a, a Timmy Boy eliminated by Zach Payne. And then Kevin Lee, on his own, able to, to eliminate a Ryan Kemp. But unfortunately, the numbers game catching up to him. Payne able to put him down with the titles. But these past couple of weeks in singles action, it has been T and Lee respectively. T beating Zach Payne. Kevin Lee just six nights ago putting on an absolute slobber knocker against the fire starter Ryan Kent. In fact, even suffered a minor concussion. The doctor's clearing him to compete, but he's not at 100% heading into this match. Does that even the odds a little bit? I guess we'll find out right now. It is the first time we're seeing Zach Payne and uh, Ryan Kent as a tag team since the uh, Tokyo, the tag team cup, the Tokyo Cup is about to call it. The uh, tag team cup live from Tokyo, Japan. Zach Payne and Ryan Kent, though, both decorated champions in singles action. Zach Payne, first ever United States champion, hardcore champion, second uh, <clears throat> second longest reigning world tag team champion, CMV history, alongside his other partner, Big Show. Ryan Kent, former NXT champion, hardcore champion, money in the bank winner, world champion. Together, though, they're looking to get their reign It'll last a little bit longer than two weeks. Tina Lee's first reign, they won the title, of course, at Exodus. Only lasted two weeks. Zach Payne and Ryan Kent ain't about that life. See if they can get past them. It is, of course, tornado tag rules. All four men will be active in the ring at the same time, much like the Vixens' uh, Armageddon Hell in a Cell earlier tonight. First man to gain pinfall or submission will win his team the match. They'll walk out with the tag team titles. <sighs> Hasn't there only been... No, that's true. There's been two title matches so far. Fury, of course, crowned the new Vixens champion, winning the Armageddon Hell in a Cell. Hayden escaping the cage, defeating Sunshine, become the new Anarchy champion. We got the tag titles online right here tonight. Still to come, international title decided in a triple threat. Jackson Jordan defending against uh, Ringo Max and Duo Maxwell in our main event. The steel cage comes down one last time as Troy Voodoo and Justin Sane fight it out to crown a new undisputed tag team champion. What? Who did I give a tag team competitor a title shot to? What? Please explain, Austin. I don't remember giving a tag team competitor a singles opportunity. Let's talk about hashtag trending worldwide like six months ago. Rest in peace. Greatest tag team of all time. Rip Chet Taylor. You're always in our thoughts. Shanaz Andoni later on tonight, though. He'll, he's in tag action alongside Sushi X, taking on the corporation's hellhound. I like to call him Quantum. And the debuting Nelson Jr. Here they come, though. The CMV World Tag Team Champions. Two-man power trip. That's what they're calling themselves. They have all the power. Two of the greatest superstars in CMV history. They're up there. These two. They could be involved in that argument for greatest CMV superstar of all time. <clears throat> Former bitter rivals. These two men have hated each other for the majority of their careers. Fought in ladder matches, hardcore matches for the hardcore championship. Zach Payne beat Ryan Kent. To win the hardcore title. They fought for the money in the bank briefcase. Zach Payne tried to take it away from Kent. And a ladder match. I think it was that night of champions. But now they're tag team partners. Their chemistry. Blending together. They, they know each other so well. Will it be enough to get past T and Lee here tonight? Though again. Lee is suffering from a minor concussion. He's not at 100%. We'll see if that affects him a whole lot right now. As they make their way out here. <laughs> Please respect the welder's mask. That's vintage Kent. 
that's a staple of his CMB career. He's always had that mask. He's the fire starter. All right, he can't be burning himself. He can't be getting a fire in his eyes. I don't know. <laughs> Please respect the mask. Here they come, though. T and Lee. Tim LaFave decorated in singles action, two-time Anarchy champion. Again, he and uh, he and Lee won the tag titles off of hashtag trending worldwide at Exodus. Only had that two-week reign, losing the titles in Tokyo, Japan to Kent and Payne. Looking to get him back here tonight, though. Earlier tonight, T and uh, Lee hyping each other up. Lee was practicing, practicing his uh, martial arts with those beautiful nunchucks. Such such beautiful moves. Maybe he'll pull the nunchucks out from the ring. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. They should add nunchucks as a weapon. Please, confirmed. 2K17. What's up, Jake? <laughs> Some sponsors. There you go. Referee holding up the World Tag Team Tuttles. That cell's about to come down any moment now. There you see it. Two-man power trip. T and Lee. Tornado tag. Armageddon. Turn that arm again. Rest in peace. GG dashing. GG dashing. I was thinking about earlier tonight that beautiful Vixens match inside the cell in which Fury was crowned the new Vixens champion. Now this is Tornado Tag. Regular Hell in a Cell. Again, first man to gain Pinfall's mission will win the titles for his team. And immediately Lee pulling out a chair. Going to uh, put that no disqualification rule to effect. Zach Payne ain't going to let him use it. Though. Grabs him by the head. You know it's going to be a target for, uh, for Payne and Kent in this match as the fire starter targets Timmy Boy. Again, in my opinion, it's still there. We still got so much of the year left, but Ryan Kent and Kevin Lee definitely going to be a, a big time nomination for match of the year. If you did not see it, make sure you check it out in the latest episode of Monday Night Fusion. Wait a minute, T, or I should say Lee. My bad, T with a, the knee to the face there, the fire starter. Lee with a beautiful DDT down into the steel chair. But uh, if you didn't see that match between Ryan Kent and Kevin Lee, definitely check it out. Five stars, six stars. Rink of the eyes there by Zach Payne. No disqualifications. Again, anything goes. Flapjack there by Payne. I think Lee's dick landed on the steel chair. That couldn't have felt too great. As Timmy Boy, the Brooklyn Brawler. Very old. Oh, and Zach Payne. There you go. Steel chair right to the head. As I was saying, though, Timmy Boy with a very classic move set. A lot of suplexes, multiple variations. Really, every variation of a suplex you could possibly imagine. This man has it. He can also show us his athleticism from time to time with standing moonsaults. Another flapjack there. Dragon's <laughs> by the. Kung Fu Practitioner. And that chair, I'm pretty sure, was outside of the ring. Don't know how he grabbed it. GG. Don't know what's happening right now. Ryan Kent is all over Timmy Boy, though. Wiggles his way out of the uh, scoop slam attempt. Pinned by Zach Payne on Kevin Lee here. Very close call. Tim's got to be on high alert, man, because Kevin Lee is injured. It's going to be easier to pin him. You know that's going to be a target for Zach Payne and Ryan Kent. Pinned by Ryan Kent on Timmy Boy. Only gets him a two count. Already some close calls for T and Lee. This match is not going their way so far. It has been all two-man power trip. <clears throat> Ryan Kent sending Tim crashing face first right into his own tag team partner. There's a gut wrench suplex. Let's count how many different variations of suplexes Timmy Boy hits in this match here tonight. So there's the gut wrench. Nice rolling neck snap. Tim LaFave going after Kent, pulling him to his feet. Kevin Lee, meanwhile, still going at it with Payne, the leg sweep. Oh, look at this. T and Lee. Payne is down. Oh, a snap neck breaker. A little bit of assist from uh, Lee. Didn't expect to really see any tag team moves in this match. That's pretty awesome. T and Lee getting these CMB fans on their feet. Oh, no, my God. That kind of little bit landed on the chair. Like half of his face landed on the chair. Ryan kept with the flapjacks. Now, oh, double pin. Referee's going to have to break up both of them. Oh, no. He's counting. Okay. He counted the pinfall after Tim broke the pin. Rest in peace. Oh, now Timmy Boy with a crack of the chair right to the back of Payne's head. Inverted suplex there by Ryan Kent. Switching opponents now. <sighs> oh, Long Island slam attempt, I think, from Tim. Countered, though, by Payne. Oh, and just plants him face first into the steel chair. I mean, that's called a rolling neck snap, though, Austin. I feel like that was a snap neck breaker. Rest in peace. Oh, jumping cutter by Payne. Will that be enough to keep Timmy Boy down? One, two, no. Able to kick out. But wait a minute. Victory roll here on Kevin Lee. One, two. Oh, my God. That was close. Oh, my heart just stopped for a second. I thought that was actually going to be it. Cat about to steal it. Oh, oh, catching cutter. Catching cutter. Payne could have it. 
Payne can have it. Lee is down, flips him over, hooks the leg. One, two. No, just a two count though. Meanwhile, single knee face breaker on Kevin Lee. He ate five of those earlier this week on Monday Night Fusion. One, two, just a two count though. It has been all two-man power trip here tonight. This is ridiculous. But T and Lee staying resilient, not giving up. Ah, oh, but here comes Kent. Tim's got to get back to his feet. Has to help out his tag team partner. If he gets hit with this, it might be all over. Might be lights out. Vintage Kent, belly to back, slam incoming. Tucks the arms, bam, right into the canvas. Tim, what is Tim doing? Tim, no turn around. Tim, Tim, what's the ref doing? Ref, he's watching Tim. Beautiful plancha. On to Zach Payne over the top rope. Ref is just not counting the pin. That would have been all she wrote. What the hell, ref? He was memorized by, uh, mesmerized, I should say, by Timmy Boy. Putting everything on the line right there. Going all out with the plancha. That would have been all she wrote, man. Two-man power trip would have retained their titles if it weren't for the ref. And now Timmy Boy looks for his comeback here as Payne struggles to get back to his feet. There you go. There's the, uh. The forearm, leaping forearm, inverted atomic drop. Going to finish off the scoop slam, of course. <sighs> what a match. Irish whip by Lee. Going to grab the chair and then just drop it. Zach Payne back in control. Oh, now Payne's going for his comeback. There's one clothesline. There's a second one. Takes down both members of T and Lee. I don't think he completed the comeback, though. I think it broke. Meanwhile, the fire started to the top rope. Body splash to Kevin Lee. And C and Lee have got to figure out a way to turn the tides, get back in control. Both members just counter. Oh, 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 oh! Kevin Lee looking for that roundhouse. Tim with a two count on Zach Payne. Bam! No, no! Kent with a roll up, but into the power bomb. What a match! What a series of events right there. Ryan Kent getting lucky. Almost caught with the roundhouse kick. Oh, now. Kevin Lee just went for his uh, one-punch knockout. He uses from time to time. Zach Payne with a pin attempt. Oh, he got it. He got it. One, two, just a two count. Lee with the pin. One, two. No, Ryan Kent able to kick out. And now Zach Payne scales to the top rope. What's he looking to hit here on old Timmy boy? Oh, Tim! Tim! Cody Allen Cyclone! Cody Allen Cyclone! Out of the chair! Out of the chair! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Hooks the leg! One! Two! Three! And Tim got it! Tim got it! What a finish! Oh, my God! That was beautiful! Finish of the year! Cody Allen Cyclone face first onto a chair. And T and Lee are once again your world tag team champions. What a match. What a display by all four men. Non-stop action from the very second the bell rang. My God, Cody Allen Cyclone onto the chair puts this match to an end as T and Lee are once again Two-time, two-time, ladies and gentlemen, CMB World Tag Team Champions. They're back on top of the mountain. What a match. Inside of the hell in a cell. <laughs> Whew, that was a good one. That was a 10 out of 10 match right there. And our second and final Hell in a Cell match of the evening. We got to see that finish. Right here, Zach Payne scales to the top rope. Didn't expect to get caught with the Coney Island Cyclone, though. And perfect position for the chair. Look at this. Face first goes Payne. Splat. Even busted him wide open. And meanwhile, Kevin Lee actually got his comeback off at the very end right here. You can see on Kent. Able to keep Ken at bay, not allowing to break up the pinfall. And once again, our CMV World Tag Team Champions, T and Lee. He even got the super kick off to put Kent down once and for all after the bell rang. Here are your winners 
Timmy Boy busted open. Bloody bruise and all. Kevin's busted open as, as well. I didn't see him get busted open. And that concussion probably is not, it probably isn't feeling too great, but he came out here nonetheless. He put it on the line. They kicked some ass. What a match and what a win. Amazing match indeed and still so much to get to here tonight. Up next, the International Championship is up for grabs in a triple threat. Jackson Jordan defends against both Ringo Max and Duo Maxwell. <clears throat> Whew. Great match. Match of the night so far. 10 out of 10. And here we go. Jackson Jordan hitting a mo uh, hitting a massive, I would like to say, a massive roadblock in his second reign as the international champion. His first defense. He's gonna have to do it in a triple threat where he doesn't have to be pinned or involved in the decision to lose his title. Ringo Max and Duo Max will his challengers. Ringo, of course, beating a uh, duo. At the top of the month in a number one contenders match to earn a one-on-one -on -one bout against Jackson Jordan. But two weeks ago, we saw a duo put on an impressive showing against Jackson Jordan. Despite 20 interferences, literally 15 or 20, I think, interferences by Ricky Brown ringside. Duo still managed to pin the international champ clean, get his way into this title match, make it a triple threat. And just a few nights ago on uh, Monday Night Fusion, we actually saw Ringo Max and Duo Max will team up to take on Jackson Jordan and Ricky Brown. Ringo getting the victory by uh, planting Ricky Brown face first with the Banshee's call. That partnership is not going to last long, I can assure you. It is every man for themselves right now. As Ringo looks to win his first ever championship here in CMV. He's been in CMV almost three years. No tag titles, no singles title. Hasn't really won any sort of massive match. You know, no King of the Ring or Royal Rumble or Money in the Bank, anything. Duo Maxwell, of course, won the second ever. Royal Rumble match, only like a month into his uh, main roster career. Failed to win the title at WrestleMania, but then won it at Backlash. Only a month-long reign, though. He's certainly ready to get back on the driver's seat, get some gold over his shoulder. Jackson Jordan never got his fair rematch for the International Championship after he lost it in the six-man ladder match at WrestleMania to Troy Voodoo. <laughs> Hello, Cobra. This isn't the Super Bowl. This is Dark Carnival. This is better, man. This is better, all right? Trust me. The main event tonight is going to be... Uh, I don't even know their names, so I'm going to try. I was going to say the two quarterbacks of the team. I don't even know their names, though. One of them, one of them's Manning, though. One of them's Peyton, isn't it? Because I saw a Saturday Night Live thing with him. Cam Newton, that's his name, too. I remember the other one because I watched a YouTube video. That's our main event. It's Peyton Manning and, and Cam Newton, one-on-one -on -one inside Hell in a Cell. I have a tweet here from Matt Jefferson. He says, just as predicted, my boys T and Lee bring the gold home to the Rebellion. Great job, guys. Drinks are on me tonight. As I was saying, though, Jackson Jordan had to win back his international championship after six months inside of the Elimination Chamber. He eliminated three men in that match. And his first reign was known as the United States title way back when. He's actually the longest reigning mid-card champion of all time. I think he held it for five months. Certainly not showing any sort of, uh, you know, fear or... Or worry as he makes his way out here. Again, doesn't even have to be pinned or submitted. Not involved in the decision to lose his title. Much what we saw earlier tonight, Cassie Maverick was not pinned. She wasn't submitted. Fury pinned Quinn Bell to win the Vixens championship. So far, though, indeed, every title has changed hands. The international title on line right now. Later on tonight, our main event, the world title up for grabs. We're going to crown a new champion. Voodoo Insane go at it inside of a steel cage. Oh, I got a tweet here from Better Than Senior, who's already looking to the future, even though he's got a match later on tonight. He says, T and Lee win? Maybe B and Quantum could get the corporation some gold. He and Quantum D will team up later on tonight to take on Shanaz Andoni and Shushi X. Shushi. Shushi, Shushi, Shushi. This is Xbox One, Blary. You guys get a little bit of a taste of what I'm listening to right now. The beautiful Ringo Max. 
Again, almost three years in CMV. No championship goal to his name. No major wins. Tonight, that could change. If he can win the inter international championship. Wait a minute. Tweet here by Lefebvre. He says, focus, strength, and rage. Coupled together, they were the perfect recipe for victory. And that is what Lee and I have achieved. Victory. Once again, your tag team champions. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> a tweet here from Ringo Max at Death Machine CMV. He says, three minutes ago, just finished my steak and potatoes. Time for some just desserts. Ringo Max, obviously, uh, confident in himself. Here comes Duo Maxwell, the god of death. I mean, he retired Turner, that's true, but it's really not a, you know, it's really not a Royal Rumble or Money in the Bank or King of the Ring. Those are really major wins. Rest in peace, Dave Turner, though, always on our thoughts. First ever inductee in the CMV Hall of Fame. God of Death, he's been on quite a roll these past couple of months. The only losses he's snagged are against Ringo Max at the top of the month and inside the chamber at Exodus. Ringo Max, let's remember, uh, he still uh, hasn't been beaten one-on-one. -on -one. Only once this season by Dave Turner at Battle Scars. Other than that, Ringo Max, one-on-one, -on -one, he's been on a tear. But this is a triple threat. It's every man for themselves, no disqualifications, no countouts. As the referee holds up what is on the line here tonight, that international championship. All three men getting ready. And the ring bell dings, ladies and gentlemen. Right out of the gate, it's going to be Ringo and Duo going at it. But Jackson from behind. Nope, Duo breaks up whatever he's going for. Ringo going for a ride up over the shoulders. Bam! Back of the head brought right down onto the knee. And then a spine buster by Duo catches the champion. <laughs> Alvius is back. Hey, it is Milan. Milan? Milan? <laughs> They're the skull gang, man. I'm just, do I have a skull? I don't think that the back the back tat is a skull. I think it's just a face. It doesn't look like a skull to me. They can be the skull gang, though. New stable confirmed. Oh, now Ringo. He's not having a fun time in this match so far. As he's getting ribs. His ribs just... Ah. Brought right down on the shoulders of Duo. Duo, obviously the tallest man in this match. Stands at 7'2", biggest man on the CMV roster. NXT included. Absolute Goliath. The god of death, he calls himself. He calls himself. There's multiple of them. He's multiple personality disorder. Ringo Max calls himself the Austrian death machine. A lot of death. A lot, a lot of death. Jackson Jordan. He's con Oh! He's content with getting cracked over the skull with a steel chair. Oh, and now Jackson going to retaliate with a kick to the knee. It doesn't take the big man down, though. Tweet here from William Rage. He says, uh, broke my damn nose the last time I fought. CMV will pay for my surgery. What? I don't know. William Rage broke his nose. I mean, he just competed earlier tonight in the pre-show. He actually got a victory thanks to a count out. Mike Grizzly not able to get back in the ring in time. <laughs> Rest in peace, Austin. Duo Maxwell using his pure strength, that death claw, ran into the traps of Ringo Max. Max able to battle out of it, though, and Jackson from behind, waist lock Lariat. And I take down the big man. No, but Duo's still taller. Duo's seven foot two and a half centimeters. I don't know. He's taller, though, somehow. He's taller in spirit. Uh-oh, Wasteland. Ringo's just getting hit with some nasty moves in this match. And Jackson Jordan and Duo, like, just tossing him back and forth like a fucking sack of dirty laundry. <laughs> Reverse DDT there by Jordan as Ringo looks to finally get himself inserted into this bout. Breaks up whatever move Jackson was going for there. Now Ringo's just breaking up everybody's moves. It's pretty rude. Can't even grapple the big man. Duo's too strong, too big for him. <clears throat> Jackson can't do it either. They're going to have to work together, I think. No, Duo's just tossing him off left and right. Like, please stop touching me. Uh, Jackson with the springboard forearm smash attempt? I'm not completely sure. I know what this is, though. Death Valley Driver. 
by the masked man. Takes down Ringo Jackson, the cheeky, the cheeky champion, the cheeky, the dirty heel, gonna try to steal that pin there. Duo ain't about that life though. You gotta wonder if maybe Duo is gonna join this revolution as well. He has his, he's been having his problems with the corporation as of late. They recruited him. They brought him back to CMV to take out Bison when he couldn't get the job done. They kind of tossed him aside, turned on him. Maybe he'll throw his lot in. We haven't heard from him yet. He's not a, he's not a very, uh, he's, he likes to keep quiet most of the time. Does uh, Duo Max. So let's his in-ring abilities to the talking for him. Ringo again going to get those ribs targeted. Brought right down to the shoulder. <laughs> Indeed, the last triple threat Ringo Max was in was at WrestleMania, which he won. Taking on Mark and Tell and Cole Savage. Jackson to the top. Duo says, nah, B. Picks up Ringo. Now Jackson from behind, though. What is he going for here? Looks like Dark Matter inbound. Plants him face first. Hooks the leg. Duo's just standing there. I guess he knew that it wouldn't be over. Wanted Ringo to exert his own energy to kick out. Didn't want to save him. It's a good strategy. Yo, Rexplex! <laughs> Everybody adopting that move from the hillbilly. Since we haven't seen him in like months. Everybody's just hitting that move for him. Ringo from the top completely warps through Duo to hit the senton on Jackson Jordan. Oh, Ringo Max now looking to put him in the camel clutch. Fuck his ass and make him humble. Duo Maxwell breaks up. Doesn't want to risk a, a submission. Ain't about that life. Ain't about taking that risk. Ringo, what is he going for here? That stump pile driver. Brings Jackson right down to the top of his head. Ringo's pretty upset that dude just broke up that move. <laughs> He's doing that kid thing like, oh, come on. Why you got to do that? Oh, Ringo from behind with a jumping neck breaker. Get some serious hops to reach uh, Duo's head. I'm pretty sure Max will go for his comeback. Sit out power bomb by Max. That's what actually beat Duo a couple weeks ago in their normal contenders match. Right into a spine buster, though. The God of Death now lifting the Austrian Death Machine to his feet. Going to Irish him out to the uh, ring. He's trying to hit something here. Jackson now going to say nah. <laughs> Poor Duo just wants to hit something on the apron. Nobody's letting him. Meanwhile, Ringo Max, the step, standing at eight feet tall, steps over the top. Ropes! Shoulder first into the steel post, and then a drop kick. Didn't really seem to affect Duo, though. Look at this. Jackson and Ringo just stomping a mud hole in Duo Maxwell right now. He's going to Irish him, dude. He's going to give him some shots. They're going to they're gonna do some river dancing. You know? He's going to Irish him. He's going to treat him to an Irish tradition. Ringo Max is Irish. You didn't know? His nickname is the Austrian Death Machine, but it's just a spelling error. It's supposed to be the Irish Death Machine. As Ringo did get hit with the backslide driver, Duo broke off the pin. Now a bear hug by the monster Ringo Max. Yes. I don't know what move. Uh, what kind of moves does this dude have? Because he's hitting all these like ginormous moves. That's what duos are waiting to hit all. Oh, hashtag! Hashtag out of nowhere. One, two, no! But Duo Max will to power out that hard plastic mask that protects his face, probably absorbing most of the damage. That's the danger of Jackson, though. That thing can come out of nowhere. Completely thin air. Out of nowhere! Duo is still down from that. Trying to recuperate. Oh, look at this! Schrodinger's kill! Nailed on Jackson Jordan as duo. I don't know, he just pointed at ring was like, good job. GG. Not even a one count, though. Duo ain't gonna let that happen. Oh, and Maxwell, that huge hand of his, the big meaty claws wrapped around Ringo's throw into the military position, down into the uh, slam maneuver type thing. <laughs> Ringo. Oh, Ringo Banshee's call inbound. Plants the big man face first. But Ringo not able to capitalize. And Jackson Jordan ain't even going to go for the pin. He wants to go for his comeback. We saw him crack his neck. There's one clothesline. There's a second one. Ducks Ringo's clothesline attempt. Turns around right into a snap power slam. Meanwhile, Duo Maxwell trying to get back to his feet. Second back slide driver inbound, though, for the Austrian Death Machine. Luckily, Maxwell's back up in time. He should be able to break that up, and he does. Not even a one count. No, this is Xbox One. Welsh. Uh, 
Ringo going for the cheeky pin, even though Duo's standing right in front of him. And now Duo's just going on an elbow drop frenzy. Oh, fall from grace! Fall from grace by the big man! Jackson going to try to steal the pin, though. It's just all about stealing them pins. And Duo says, no, nah, mate. Come on, what are you thinking? Oh, Duo's going to try to take the pin. Oh, going to go for that dirty heel pin, too. Both of his ginormous feet up on the second rope. Jackson able to break it up, though. There's no disqualification, so he doesn't have to hide it. No count outs either. Anything goes. Oh, Ringo already ate two of these in the match. Now it's Jackson Jordan's turn. Fair enough. Ringo getting up close and personal. Getting a nice look at that uh, chest tat. He wants to kiss it like I want to kiss his back tat. Oh, face plant. All right, well, the strength of fucking Ringo. Going for the pin. One. Two, just a two count though. That ain't gonna be enough to keep down the former world champion. The second ever Royal Rumble winner. Hashtag though. Knocks the lights out of Ringo. Can Duo get up in time? One, two, three. And Jackson Jordan able to retain his international championship. Duo Maxwell not able to get back to his feet in time to break up the pin. And that hashtag, like I said, comes out of thin air. Ringo didn't even see it coming. Knocked his lights out. Out. And our first championship has been retained here tonight. Jackson Jordan still the international champion. Just got it back. He's not going to let go that easy. Not, not after one month. Jackson Jordan too resilient. Triple threat. Had the, the deck stacked against him. But he still comes out on top. Great triple threat match. Multiple men had the win time and time again. Jackson Jordan gave a hashtag to both of his opponents. But that last one is enough to get the job done. Look at this right here. It's going to replay the mud hole stomps. Ringo and fucking Jackson's beating the shit out of Duo. <laughs> where's where's fucking where's where's uh goddamn fucking what's his name though cobros chic i forgot his first name Sheiky baby she son of chic there he is where's son of chic though that cmv legend there you go that was the ending right there jackson jordan with the hashtag out of nowhere knocks ringo out flush duo not able to get back up in time to break up the pin and indeed still your international champion wants the ref to put it on him. Oh, the ref says no. Jackson getting impatient. Three titles have changed hands so far. Finally a retention. Jackson Jordan. Look, he's saying to everybody in the back, this ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Bring it on. You want some? Come get some, kid. Jackson Jordan. Great victory here tonight. The only man to retain his title so far. Here at Dark Carnival, still one more championship match to come. That's in our main event following this match right here inside of the steel cage. It will be Voodoo. It will be Sam. We'll be crowning a new world champion. But right now, before we get there, it's our co-main event of the evening. Quantum and Nelson Jr. pair up. They got Shanaz Andoni and Sushi X. <laughs> because if you turn uh, commentary off, Welsh, then you can't hear the announcer. Like announce title matches or who people's names are. So I turn it down as low as I can so we can still hear Edith, we call her. Because Lena Garcia is a piece of trash. Edith is an angel. <clears throat> but indeed, Sushi X, a couple weeks ago on Fusion, made a call to arms, a plea for assistance. Against Triple H's reign of tyranny. Sushi X saying it's enough. It's enough of Triple H screwing everybody. Taking away opportunities that certain superstars deserve to, to put over his, his own you know his own agenda. His own superstars. That, you know like Troy Voodoo and fucking uh, Quantum and Nelson Jr. And Billy and, and Mike Grizzly. And it's all really started between these four. After Sushi X's uh, match against Omega Lee. Uh, Monday Night Fusion uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the two got into confrontation backstage. Quantum. Actually going for a timestamp on old Sushi, but Sushi moved out of the way, hit Omega, took him out, 
And then Quantum turned his attention to Sushi, took him out, but Shanaz came to the rescue, the real number one Bubba, helping out the Asian sensation. That didn't last long, though, as Nelson Jr. would make his presence felt. Uh, getting down low, he took out Shanaz and said, Triple H sends his regards. Obviously letting Shanaz and Sushi know he's a part of the corporation now. This, this quote-unquote rebellion, Triple H, he likes to do the little quote-unquotes. Doesn't really consider it a rebellion. He considers it a joke. And he wants it to be squashed here tonight by Quantum and Nelson Jr. And Triple H saying, you two destroy Shanaz and Sushi tonight. I want them dead. I want them out of here. I want this rebellion gone, done for. I don't want to hear of it again. We have a tweet here from uh, Timmy Boy. He says, good luck to my brothers in arms. Shanaz and Sushi, I find it sad we must war against Omega Z. But alas, he made his choice. We made ours. And indeed, Omega Z, a.k.a. Quantum. I like to refer to him as the Hellhound of uh, the corporation. Kind of Triple H's right-hand man. He was trying to hype up the corporation earlier tonight backstage. You know, telling everybody, you know, we the best. You know, we changed a lot. You know, he appreciates them. He's going to lead Nelson Jr. into battle. It was supposed to be the in-ring debut of Nelson earlier this week on Monday Night Fusion, but Triple H changed the plans last minute, wanted Quantum to show the, the young up-and-comer how it's done, and he indeed did, taking Shanaz's head off with two timestamps to defeat him. So Quantum and uh, Nelson Jr. definitely heading into this match with the momentum on their side. And we have a tweet here from Matt Jefferson, much like Timmy Boy, saying, Good luck, my brothers. Do us proud, Sushi and Shanaz. Bring us home the big win over the lapdogs. Definitely a win for Shanaz and Sushi here tonight would prove that the rebellion is to be taken seriously by Triple H. <laughs> Halftime shell. Where's Hannibal? Bring out the objects. Bring out the trash cans and the... I don't know, other things you can headbutt. Teddy bears. The barricade wall. A fan. A chosen fan out of the audience. A young child you can headbutt. <laughs> Timming? <clears throat> Here we go. This is our co-main event of the evening. Hello, Rifted, indeed. As Quantum makes his glorious entrance down to the ring. It's been quite a night of action thus far. Favorite match, best night, uh, the best match of the night so far. Definitely that tornado tag, a hell in a cell match for the tag titles. Spoilers in the chat for for what? The Super Bowl? I don't think the Super Bowl is really a thing you can spoil. I don't think anybody really watches that later. Those fans sitting behind their chairs, they're in the cement. They're in the wall. Oh, spoilers for the show. GG dashing. Rip. Yeah, no spoilers for uh, Dark Carnival Riften. Good old Riften. If you don't want to watch the show. <laughs> Please chill, Tim. Everything you say confuses me. And here comes Nelson Jr. Finally, after weeks of, of hype, this man was very vocal. Uh, when he was first signed to CMV on, on Twitter, always talking trash about it. He was watching the shows, talking trash about everybody he possibly could. Finally showed up as a part of the corporation. Flips off the hood that's not there. Uh, as a member of the corporation, Triple H taking him under his wing. Triple H trying to grow the corporation. You know there's a little bit of worry in the back of the COO's mind that this rebellion could indeed turn serious. But here tonight, if Quantum and Nelson Jr. can put it to a rest quickly, take out the loudmouth Sushi X, take out his... His close ally, Shanaz. It won't be easy, though. Shanaz, Andoni, and Sushi X, two of the greatest tag team champions of all time, with different partners, respected. Of course, Shanaz, Andoni, with Chet Taylor, and Sushi X, with Quantum. Four-time tag team champions they were, and Shanaz, alongside Chet, was the longest-reigning tag team champion of all time. 
We'll see what they can do together here. There's Ralph making his cameo. Ralph's hyped for this match. co main about leading Shinaz with a nice new attire here. He's going solo now. He's, he needs to ditch the old threads. Leave the memories alone. Rest in peace. Hashtag trending worldwide. Rip Chet Taylor. Gone but not forgotten. In our thoughts always. Shinaz is real number one, Bubba. The Punjabi playboy, Johnny Gat. Shanaz uh, helping out Sushi X, as I was saying, that backstage brawl that occurred because Quantum took out Chet Taylor. Effectively ended his uh, Monday Night Fusion career, perhaps a CMV career, with a brutal neck injury. He was supposed to be out for, uh, the doctor said, at least up to a year, but Triple H signed to release him. Can't be paying for someone who can't compete for that long. Number one cum bubble. Quantum also taking out Bison at, uh, at Exodus. After Quantum answered the open challenge, that gauntlet Bison had to run through. Following the victory from the man from the future, he did the same thing, that brain buster from the top row down onto his setup chair. Here comes the Asian sensation now. The, I don't know if you would call him the leader of this rebellion, but he definitely is the... You know, the voice. He's trying to get everybody rounded up, trying to get everybody together to take the fight to Triple H. <laughs> the Pharaoh beard. Sushi X was a Pharaoh in another life. And there you see Quantum is all suited up for battle. He knows this is going to be a war. Well, he could stop the war right here. Like I said, though, Shanaz and Sushi get the victory. That's definitely going to that's gonna force Triple H to take notice, serious notice, not just brush off this quote-unquote rebellion like it's nothing. Shanaz now with a front headlock. Going for an airplane spin, trying to make the man from the future a little bit dizzy. <laughs> I do love the beard. Drops him down. Shanaz, what is he going for here? He's going for a calf killer or something? Leg lock? Might be a rope break. No. Oh, it's going to be a rope break? No, it's not going to be a rope break. He's not going to tap, though, I don't think. Pretty early on in the match. Omega Z, a.k.a. Blizzard, a.k.a. Quantum, a very resilient man. <laughs> I can't wait to see uh, the in-ring ability of this Nelson Jr. guy. Again, we were supposed to see him debut on Fusion, but Quantum took his place instead. Brain Buster! Down onto the knee. Bless Quantum. And now Quantum is going for a submission. He's going for the Education, or the Educator, I think that's, that's what it's called. It's like a modified sharpshooter. Turns him on his side. He's going to let go, though. No, he's not going to get the submission. Again, Shanaz Andonian, Sushi X, two of the greatest tag team champions of all time here in CMV. It's going to be interesting what they do together. Former enemies. It was actually hashtag trending while defending the CMV World Tag Team titles against X-Gen at WrestleMania just seven months ago. And what is Sushi X doing? Just came in to say hello. It's Shanaz from the top with an elbow. It looks like he's going for a fish drop. Then he changed his mind last second. Rebounds off the ropes. There's a headbutt to the uh, chest area there. Quantum's covered in that like hard metal. I don't know if that felt too great. Elbow of disdain now. I still don't think... Uh, I still don't think Quantum's tires should be allowed. It's like hard metal. That kind of stuff. You could use that as a weapon. I don't think that's not very fair. German suplex there, though, by the man from the future. Of course, former fat, former 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 four-time tag team champion alongside Sushi X, also a former Intercontinental champion. As here comes Nelson Jr. now. Jr. immediately taking Shanaz to the uh, ring apron. Then just stands there. He forgot the spot. Shanaz has to take control. Leg drop to the back of the head. Good guy Quantum doesn't try to grab Shanaz off the apron or anything. And attack the Asian Sensation now. Who's looking to teach this uh, this youngin a lesson. That he can't just walk in here and think he's a big tough guy. I think he's a big shot. Just because he's working for Triple H. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, Dragon Sleeper. A lot of submission attempts in this match. He's on three submission attempts for like three minutes in. A couple of knees right to the face by Nelson Jr. to break free. Of course, so to come up next, our main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, we will be crowning a new Undisputed World Champion, finally, as Troy Voodoo and Justin Singh go one-on-one -on -one inside of the cold and calculated, the unforgiving steel cage. Justin Singh could perhaps be CMV's last hope to, to spit right in the face. If Shanaz and Sushi can't get the job done here, you know, it might be Justin Singh who's left to, you know, try and keep Triple H at bay, not let him... Not let that world championship go back to the corporation, back into the hands of Troy Voodoo, because if it does, that's not going to be good news. Just, just feed the fire. More fuel to the fire for the corporation as a tag to Quantum now. And here we go, the, the brothers, former tag team champions together, X-Gen. The greatest tag team stables of all time here in CMB, and Quantum showing no mercy. We saw what he did to Sushi X a couple weeks ago in that backstage brawl. Took his head off with a timestamp for for Shanaz. We might have seen another brain buster situation down to a chair. I'm sure that's what Quantum's intentions were. Try to silence Sushi X as soon as possible. Takes him to the outside of the ring now. Nelson Jr. on the ring apron. And Sushi X launches his, his brother. <laughs> Nelson Jr. pulling a Chris Andrews. Boot right to the temple there by Sushi X as he... Goes uh, under the bottom rope, back into the ring, grabs Quantum by the head. I don't know why Sushi X is, uh, has chest and arm are taped. I don't know if it's an injury, if it's just fashion, if it's just some, some dank fashion sense. I'm not too sure. I haven't heard about an injury sustained to Sushi, so I can't 100% I can't confirm or deny if it is an injury or not. This is the first time that we've actually seen Sushi and Quantum toe-to-toe -to -toe against one another they fought multiple times in fact they like to they've been saying back and forth we're one one and one because sushi holds a victory over quantum quantum holds a victory over sushi and they also tied in a uh iron man match at vengeance i believe it was early last year or late last year i should say a oh, heart punch inbound by the man from the future stuns shinaz tries to retaliate and he does wiggles his way out of the scoop slam attempt kick right to the quad Oh, and an Enziguri, but no quantum sidesteps. Ain't about that life. Back suplex. Gonna go for the kip up. Yes, he is showing off the athleticism. Shanaz pushing quantum away and then goes for the pin. One, two, barely a two count. <sighs> Drop kick to the back of the neck right there. It looks like it really hurt quantum. Shanaz now lining the former Intercontinental Champion up. Bam! Boot right to the back of the head. 24th heart punch. What's up, Hellish? Nice to see you. There's the Enziguri. Second time's the charm. Couldn't get it the first uh, the first attempt. But there you go. Lights, are they out? Will it be long enough to get the three count? One, two. Close. Very close, but no cigar. 2.99999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
Kick to the midsection. Attitude adjustment. Pile driver inbound. Going old school with that one. <clears throat> Nelson Jr. What is he going for here? Half Nelson backbreaker. I thought he was trying to steal Shinaz's sig for a minute. That half Nelson neckbreaker. But no. Turned it into a backbreaker now. Drag Shinaz away from the ropes. So as to not risk a rope break. And Quantum able to stop Sushi. Oh, that was very close. I thought that was going to be it. Shinaz had enough left in him to kick out on his own, luckily. Nelson now. Oh, just bring Shinaz back right down to his back. Snapping it in two. And now Nelson Jr. Sizing the real number one bubba up. Sushi better get back into the ring quick. I don't think uh, Andoni's going to be able to kick out, of this, kick out of this on his own. Chicken wing gut buster. A gut buster face buster combo. Sushi better be quick. He better be quicker than Quanta if he wants to break this up in time. One, two, three. No, Quantum. Okay. Sushi hovering. He's out in the ring apron. Oh, he's going through the ropes. And the corporation... Going to put down Sushi and Shinaz here tonight. Sushi X just so slow getting to the ring. Quantum will stop him both times. And that chicken wing gut buster. Nelson Jr. getting the 1, 2, 3. Getting the win in this match here tonight. Hello, Sasha. What a tag team match here in the co-main event of Dark Carnival. Man, Quantum and Sushi beat the living hell out of each other when they were in there together. But Nelson Jr. coming in, picking up the scraps that Quantum left for him and taking out Shanaz Andoni. Sushi X simply not quick enough. Not as quick as his brother. You hurt me watching Bruno Mars instead of CMV. Like, please chill. I gave him both, Mori, because you had another finisher on there that a lot of people use. So I just I replaced his other finisher with the second variation, so he just hit that one instead. Here's the, uh, that's the signature attempt. I'm surprised Shushi was, Shanaz was able to kick out of that. There's the uh, chicken wing gut buster that put Andoni out like a light. And Sushi just getting back out of the ring yet, but he was so slow getting into the ring. Quantum just zipping across with a quantum leap to get over there and stop his, his brother, his former tag team partner. And tonight, the corporation, they reign supreme, but we still have one match left. Troy Voodoo and Justin Sane inside of a steel cage is our main event. Justin Sane, the last hope for this quote-unquote rebellion, tried to stick it. To the corporation and not allow Voodoo to bring the world title back to Triple H. We got a tweet here from uh, Timmy Boy. He says, despite that minor setback on the main front, the war continues. This is not over. Not by a long shot. Indeed, the war continues. But just insane. Dodging a direct answer uh, earlier this week on Fusion when he came down to the ring. He, he said he likes the idea of this, of this revolution, this revolt. He wants to take it to Triple H, but he doesn't see it. He doesn't see it working. He doesn't see what banding together will do. He thinks taking out Triple H is the is the answer is, is the only option. But there is one thing for certain that Justin Sane hates the corporation just as much as Sushi and and T and Lee and everybody else in this rebellion do. So Justin Sane, he is the last opportunity here tonight at Dark Carnival to try and stick it to the corporation and try to save the rebellion some face. Because if Troy Voodoo does indeed win, become a two-time champion, bring that title back to Triple H, that's going to be tough. But indeed, the uh, undisputed world title was vacated after Exodus. Paul Anderson beating Troy Voodoo to win it, but then he was brutally assaulted by all of the corporation, Grizzly, Billy, Voodoo, and Triple H. Effectively injured, taken out of action. The title had to be vacated. Uh, and it will be decided right now. Here tonight, of course, Sane winning the Elimination Chamber. Two years ago, he entered number one and won the whole damn thing. Earning himself this opportunity. He can become a, the uh, first ever man to win the World Championship four times. Make history yet again. Of course, he's also the longest reigning CMV Undisputed Champion. Oh, we have a tweet here from Better Than Senior, a.k.a. Nelson Jr. He says, finish off those weasels. Just match number one and I defeat longest reigning tag champ. What else do I say? So Nelson Jr. obviously full of himself, though. Quantum really did 90% of the damage in that bout. Allowed Nelson uh, to pick up the scraps, per se.
And you heard it there from Edith. It is time for our main event of the evening. Oh, we have a tweet here from Matt Jefferson now. He says, we may have lost that battle. But we sure as hell have not lost the war. Keep those heads up high, boys, or we will get our retribution. And it's time to see if it will be Voodoo becoming a two-time world champion or Justin Sane making history, becoming a four-time world champion here tonight inside of the steel cage where the only ways to win are by pinfall submission or escaping the cage via climbing up and over the wall or going through the cell door. And a steel cage might work the Sane's uh, advantage as the corporation won't be able to interfere. They can't have anybody ringside, no Triple H, no Billy, no, no Mike Grizzly. Nobody can come in and do a run-in, help out Voodoo, but... Sane saying he doesn't like gimmick matches. He likes clean one-on-one -on -one matches, so he's not too happy about that. But Sane also saying that the world title is kind of an afterthought. The only thing he cares about is getting in that ring and whooping Troy Voodoo's ass from here all the way back to Tokyo, Japan. Send a message to Triple H. And earlier tonight, between Sunshine and Hayden, we had Hayden. Climb up and over the cage to win the Anarchy Championship. Will we see the same here tonight? Will someone get a pin or submission? It's time to find out in our main event. And of course, arguably, many consider the greatest man to ever step into a CMV ring. Main event time, been one hell of a night so far. Three titles have changed hands. Jackson Jordan, the only man so far to retain his title in that triple threat, putting down Ringo Max and Duo Maxwell. And we are guaranteed a new champion here tonight. And there you see it on the back of Saints Trunks. Don't trust anyone. Maybe another reason why he's hesitant to throw his name in with the rebellion. This man doesn't trust anyone. He's a lone wolf. And look what that's got him here in CMV. Two-time NXT champion. Time United States champion. Three-time and longest reigning world champion. Looking to become a four-time champion. Put his name down in the, the record books yet again. Yes, here we go. Shucky ducky quack quack. It is time for the main event of Dark Carnival and Voodoo right out of the gate with a wheelbarrow arm drag. Wasting no time to get his hands on Justin Sane. And Voodoo just immediately trying to escape the cage. Doesn't want to stay in here any longer than he has to against Justin Sane. He probably heard what Sane said. I don't care about that world title. It's an afterthought. It would be nice to win it, but my main concern is beating the shit out of Troy Voodoo. Heavy Irish open immediately the cage wall is, is put to use as a weapon. Justin Sane driven face first. Now Voodoo listen to his feet. Irish whip. Gotta catch him on the rebound. No, Sane counters with a nice arm drag. Irish whip. Now Voodoo goes off the ropes. Right into a sling blade. A catchphrase. Shout out to Hayden right there. Hayden, another, another man who's been keeping quiet about this whole rebellion and corporation thing. We know Hayden wants to take it to Triple H, wants to get his revenge against the corporation. We don't know if he's going to join this rebellion. Another man, Duo Maxwell, who would be an obvious candidate, but he's been, he's remained silent. Pin attempt here by Sane early on. I don't think that was a one count. Maybe a one count. Barely, though. Barely. Now Sane going to wrap the legs around Voodoo's head there, but Voodoo able to wiggle free. Get a whiff of that ass. And again going to try to exit. Voodoo just wants to get the hell out of here, man. He does not want to be here right now. He doesn't care about that. Putting on a good match for these uh, these hard, these paying fans who spent their hard-earned money to come out here and watch this wrestling show, this wrestling extravaganza. 
interested to see who becomes the alpha male early in the contest. Yeah, the fight is on. We are good. Rocks, I'm good. How are you, my friend? Single underhook DDT plants Voodoo face first on the canvas. And now it's Sane who's looking to win the world title. And Voodoo is down. <laughs> Voodoo. I'm going to get taken down with one move. Now it's Sane not able to climb up high enough. Voodoo going to pull him down by the leg. Sane turns around and they get caught with a catapult. Whips him into the bottom rope. Voodoo. <laughs> Troy Voodoo now getting caught with a wheel kick. That's patented Tim, though. The wheel kick. Everything with the word wheel in it is, uh, belongs to Timmy Boy. As Voodoo again for the third time tries to escape early on. You got to do some damage to Sane. You got to keep him down, Troy. I don't know what you're thinking. Sane, a very resilient man, if not the most resilient man in CMV history. If not three time world champion, the longest reigning champ of all time for no reason. Voodoo think he's just going to come in here and pull that Cole Savage, hop out of the cage in two minutes. Shining Wizard now inbound. Connects the boot to the back of the head. Tweet here from the Oni, a.k.a. Sushi X. He says, Quantum, yet another great match that we've had. We were not involved in the outcome. Our fight isn't over. We are still 1-1-1. One, one and one. Indeed, Nelson Jr. pins Shanaz and Oni just moments ago in our co-main event. Arm drag takes down Voodoo to a kneel position. And Sane going to try to escape now. Voodoo takes a step back like, are you kidding me? Trying to pull a Voodoo. A good strategy in these types of matches would be to take out the uh, the legs and the arms. Take, make it hard to climb up the cage wall. Irish Whip going to put Voodoo in the corner. Sane going for here. Going to turn him around. Irish Whip to the other side of the ring. Going to charge on him full force. Eats double knees to the spine, though. Voodoo saw it coming. He's got him. Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Voodoo looking to become a two-time champion. Only held the title for a month after beating uh, Paul Anderson. At Cyberslam. Anderson, of course, beat him the following month at Exodus, but again was injured by the corporation. Triple H vacating the championship. Voodoo also a former tag team and longest reigning uh, international champion. I just, was I actually wrong? I think I might be wrong. Uh, Jackson joining me, the longest ring mid card champion of all time. Maybe maybe they're tied because I think Voodoo was about five months, and I think I said Jackson about five months. He definitely was the longest reigning international champion of all time because he was the first ever international champion of all time. Of course, formerly known as the United States champion, Voodoo going to try to escape here. Sane is down and out. Can Sane get up in time? I don't think Sane's going to get up in time. Voodoo. Oh, no. Sane's got him. Sane's got him. Not going to let the world title and that ass beat and slip away from that easy. Another amazing singles contest. These two never ceased to entertain the WWE Universe. Justin saying now another single underhook DDT. Doing some damage to that head. Maybe setting him up for the overkill. They're trying to escape this freaking cage like crazy. <laughs> it was ridiculous. They're not even looking to put on a match. Sane said he wanted to come out here and, uh, you know, toss Troy Voodoo and axe whoop him, but they're just trying to escape over and over again. Voodoo might actually get it because Sane's out. Sane's out. Sane, can he get up in time? Yes, he can. Troy Voodoo scared of heights, maybe, as he gets ripped off the cell wall, the cage wall, I should say. We already had our Hell in a Cell matches tonight. And saying now it's getting a bird's eye view. Not gonna not gonna go not, not gonna take the risk. <laughs> King said it best, these two just repeatedly trying to climb out of the cage. That's all they're doing so far. Oh again! Man, he was mega whipped in that goddamn cage wall. He went flying splat. Goes for a snapmare or something. Call with a wicked DDT, though. Now he eats a kick right to the jaw. Justin Sane, Irish whip. Going to put Voodoo in the corner. Maybe go for what he tried to go for earlier. No, he's going to put up at the top. What could Sane be setting up Voodoo uh, for here? Oh. Oh, my God. Stunner. He brought his jaw right down to the, 
A shoulder there from the top rope. Uh. Now Justin going to try to climb his way out of here. And Voodoo having some trouble getting back to his feet. Will Sane be able to get up? I think Sane's going to get it. Sane, Sane, Sane. Sane. Oh, wait a minute. Joy Voodoo's climbing up to meet him. Halting him from, from climbing over. Oh, and he yanks him. Oh, my God. That's a good 15 to 16 foot drop from the top. And now Voodoo getting cocky. He should just take this opportunity to climb out or pin Sane, but no. He ain't having it. I'm waiting for Sane to get up. Wants to hit that comeback, and there it is. There's one forearm. There's a second forearm. And then a sling blade to finish it off. Everybody, just with the shout outs to Hayden tonight. And wasting no time is Troy Voodoo, the golden pony boy of the corporation. Looking to climb out of here. Will Sane be able to get up in time? I don't think he's going to be able to get up in time. Troy Voodoo's at the top. That's got to be it. That's it. Troy Voodoo. Troy Voodoo got it. Voodoo got it. Troy Voodoo able to escape the cage in time. And is your new undisputed world heavyweight champion. Voodoo wasted no time. He got the hell out of there. He wasn't having it. Justin Sane stunned from the 15 to 16 foot drop off the top, then hit with the comeback. And Justin Sane, <laughs> and Justin Sane just not able to get back up in time. There you see Voodoo as Sane is just forced to watch. I don't know if Sane knows where he is. Voodoo bringing the world championship back home to the corporation. This has just not been a night for the quote-unquote rebellion. I like how she said, and you're new, representing the corporation, and then the name of the title. <laughs> representing the corporation and the new world champion. Troy Voodoo, ladies and gentlemen, walks out of Dark Carnival here tonight, the CMV World Heavyweight Champion, undisputed World Heavyweight Champion. The game is good. The game is good. Still a lot of things they should uh, add back. What a pay-per-view, though, guys. 10 out of 10. Well, not 10 out of 10. There were a lot of good matches there, but that main event it certainly wasn't fantastic or anything, but Voodoo... He doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about impressing the fans. He doesn't care about any of that ish. He only cares about bringing that championship home, getting that money, getting that paper. You feel me? What? Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting word from backstage. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Don't get out of your seats. I'm getting word backstage. Troy Voodoo still around the ring. And backstage, Brady Borton, Mr. Money in the Bank, is rushing through the backstage area. He's pushing people aside. He's coming out here, Randy Borton, Money in the Bank, briefcase in hand. Borton's coming out here right now. The referee not allowing Troy Voodoo to leave. And Borton, Randy Borton, is looking to cash in. Ladies and gentlemen, do not leave your seats. Do not go anywhere because Randy Borton's making his way out here. He's taking his time. But Borton... Borton's coming out here, the man who just lost a headhunter earlier tonight at the beginning of our show, and Voodoo is furious. The referees are not allowing him to leave ringside because Randy Borton is coming out here right now. Money in the bank, briefcase in hand, ladies and gentlemen. This is ridiculous. Voodoo is screaming. He's tossing the steps aside. He's kicking the barricade while he hurt his toe. He's ripping things out from under the ring. He is pissed right now. He can't believe it. And Borton high-fiving Tim as he makes his way down the ring. And Voodoo in the ring just won the world title after a steel cage match. Here he comes. Randy Borton's cashing in. Borton's doing it. The referee holding up the briefcase. It's on. Voodoo after a grueling cage match. Okay. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Borton cashing in his money in the bank briefcase. Back suplex by Voodoo, though. He ain't going down without a fight. He just won this for the corporation. Just won back the world title. Borton, now he's looking for his comeback. The very move he just put down Sane with. 
Aw, oh, straight jacket DDT. Plants him head first into the canvas. Borton is cashing in money in the bank, ladies and gentlemen. What a night here at Dark Carnival. And Borton. Oh, look at this Voodoo go for his comeback. Borton going to get that Damien Sandow cash in. Sling Blade by Voodoo taking a moment to wipe the sweat from his face. You know he's not at 100%. Just got done with a grueling match against Justin Sane inside of the steel cage. Borton. Just a couple hours ago, though, against the seven foot two, uh, seven foot one, I should say, four hundred pound headhunter, got crushed, out, absolutely obliterated, and Voodoo all over him right now. Oh, poor Borton, a little bit overzealous. He saw this as uh, has his opportunity to strike. Borton breaking free. Borton, Borton, single on hook, face buster. Will it be enough? Hooks the leg. One. Two! No! Troy Voodoo kicks out. Too resilient. Not giving up without a fight. Voodoo escaped that cage as quickly as he could, but he still took a lot of damage. And Borton. Borton! Did this go for a finisher? I think he went for a finisher. I'm not too sure, but I, I think he did. Indeed, do not go to the fridge, as uh, Michael Cole just said, because Randy Borton has cashed in his money in the bank briefcase. This is a championship match. Ladies and gentlemen, the world title is on the line. Sharpshooter cinched in by Borton right now. Will Voodoo tap? No, Voodoo able to get out of it. Crawls through Borton's legs. Kicks in the midsection there by the Milkamaniac. Snap suplex. Going to take down the future. As he likes to call himself, as Triple H likes to call him. Borton going to the top right now. What is he looking for up here? Rarely do we see Mr. Money in the Bank. Oh, go to the top. What a body splash. Well, the former Mr. Money in the Bank, because he is now cashed in. It's make it or break it time. Borton looking to win his first world title here in CMV. And you know, Triple H is just backstage right now. Absolutely. If you're, whoa, whoa. Catapult kick to the gut. Hooks the legs. Pedigree, pedigree to Randy Borton. Voodoo hooks the leg. One, two, no, Borton kicks out. And this is already a better match than the freaking cage. And <laughs> Troy Voodoo not going down without a fight, taking it to Mr. Money in the Bank, the former Mr. Money in the Bank right now. Gonna take it while I stop calling him that. Oh, I'm a milk -a maniac. I got my milk, brother. It's time to run wild. But Borton's having some trouble. Even though Voodoo just got finished with a nasty steel cage match, Borton's still having some trouble taking him down here. It's been all Voodoo, pretty much. Oh my god, now just repeatedly stomping him in the ribs and kicking him in the chest. <laughs> oh, fourth time going to backfire, though. Borton counters, jawbreaker. Going to stagger the new undisputed champion for just a moment. Gut-kicking battle now. Front head locked by Mr. Money in the Bank. European uppercut. Oh, oh, fall away slam! Borton! One! Two! No, oh, God, no! <laughs> Borton, come on! Randy Borton with the fall away slam. Still not enough to get the job done. Oh, Borton, come on. Elbow drop to the thigh. The most devastating move in all of CMV. Borton. Lifts Voodoo to his feet. Going to turn him around. So it's to not risk a rope break. What a spine buster. Kind of a choppy one. Oh, Borton. Borton's got it. He's sizing Voodoo up. If he can get this off. Borto end. Borto end. Hooks the leg. One. Two. Three. And Borton is your new undisputed world heavyweight. Champion, he's done it. He struggled with it. It wasn't as easy as he thought it would be, but Borton is your new CMV undisputed champion. What a night, what a match, and what a win. No longer Mr. Money in the Bank. He's the undisputed champion, ladies and gentlemen. What a night for the Milk and Maniac. Suffering a devastating loss in the hands of the headhunter. Coming out here, though, after the brutal cage match between Voodoo and Sane. 
putting it all on the line even though he himself was injured. And he walks away. The new world champion. Moo, moo, moo indeed. Randy Borton's going all the way to Ascendance. And here's the finish. The Borto end that has put down many a man. The start of the Milk Era. What a night. What a pay-per-view, ladies and gentlemen. And at the end of the day, it's neither the Corporation or the Rebellion who reigns supreme. It's the Milkman. It's Randy Borton. Looking at that championship, tears in his eyes. It has been a long journey, almost three years. Randy Borton finally is your undisputed world heavyweight champion. Well deserved. What a night. And we have a tweet here from Timmy Boy to end the stream. He says, congratulations to my friend Borton. It's been a long road, but here you are now at the top. Thanks for taking something away from the corporation tonight. And Borton celebrates his win as Dark Carnival goes off the air. Whew. What a pay-per-view, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're new to the show, make sure you follow me. If you like what you saw, I do stream every Monday and Friday. I know today's Sunday. Sometimes I stream other days if I feel like it because it's my life and I live it how I see fit. But definitely, uh, I do stream every uh, Friday and Monday usually. Well, tomorrow because I'm streaming today. Um, but the card will be up tomorrow. For the Fallout, guys, our next pay-per-view is Regicide, where every championship is. Um, Monday Night Fusion will be on the line, all six of them. It is going to be a good one, guys. I hope you're joining me for all the past episodes, as usual, are on my YouTube channel, which is linked on my Twitch page. The website for the show is communityuniverse.formotion.com if you want your call on the show. And we're going to end things off here tonight with a good look at your new world champion, the Moo Moo Man himself, Randy Borton. <laughs>